Welcome to the University of Loughborough, everyone. You can see the NFL Academy Shield right there in the middle of the field here at University of Loughborough. It's a, it's a wet one, but it looks like it's going to be brightening up, and we're excited to be able to bring you coverage today of the NFL Academy's game against Schwabisch Hall Unicorns. They've come over here all the way from Germany. These two teams met last season as well. We'll bring you details of that. But today, it's the kickoff of the NFL Academy season. And, you know, if you've been following these guys for some time, you know the last time they were out, they had that great win at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And if you're a young man or a young person that wants to get involved in the NFL Academy, there's all sorts of ways that you can do that. You don't need to have football experience, but we want to bring you just uh, the opportunity that's uh, here for you today. And let's watch a video just to give you a sense of how to get involved in the NFL Academy. Well, that said and done. I'm going to be committing to you. I'm announcing that I officially commit to you. Officially commit to you. Oh, that's officially commit to you. I would like to say that I'm committing to you. Can't wait to announce to the world where I'll be going to. Temple University. Temple University. Northwestern University. Oh. University of Tennessee. You come to the NFL Academy for a reason. This is the UK-based player development program for student athletes. It's like football Hogwarts. It's incredible. You want to be here to play the best, become the best, and realize your future. There's only one NFL Academy in the world, and you want to be in the best position to go play college ball in the U.S. This is the place. Students have been here and done it. We're living that dream. Our academy is built on the strength of the NFL Shield. Every star on that shield represents excellence, integrity, preparation, and yes, performance at the highest level. When you wear the shield, you're standing on the shoulders of the men and women who have made this game great. Coach Hagan, he represents that. He's been at the best. Cleveland Brown, the New York Jets, Notre Dame, and the University of North Carolina. He is here to win. We need to see who's smart, who's fast, who can do this fundamentally well, who will do whatever it takes to win and leave no doubt. And when we find those players, we'll have success. This is the place where you can represent your family, your town, your country at the highest level. It ain't easy, and it's not for everyone. But if you're willing to commit, we will turn you into a winner. Nobody. Ain't nobody got it better than us. Welcome back to University of Lapa. What a great highlight reel that is, and that gives you some of the excitement that we've got here today. We'll be watching these players, as you can see, Schwabish Hall coming out there. My name's Carl Walkinshaw. Welcome up to the booth, and I'm so happy today to be joined by Sam Fenton, who was QB1 for the NFL Academy all those uh, for many years, and you played uh, Schwabish Hall last, last year, didn't you, Sam? It's great to see you here. Hi, Carl. Thank you for that. That was a great introduction. And yeah, we played them last year, and I'm looking forward to this game. Like, I can feel the energy right now. The energy is up there. And I just can't wait for this game to get started. It's looking like it's going to be a great game out here today. Great conditions for a great football game. Now, the NFL Academy won the toss and they will receive today, Sam. So that's interesting. You want to take the ball first and get this high-powered offense on the field, do you think? Yeah, for sure. You want Jack out there, Jack slinging the ball out there because he's going he's gonna to set the tone. And I feel like if they start playing fast and start, um, start, just start with intensity, like, it's going to be a great game to watch. Of course, Jack Troney is now taken over from you, didn't he? You were kind of mentoring him for so many years. Are you excited by the growth of Jack that you've seen? Oh, yeah, the growth from Jack is phenom phenomenal. Like, uh, I was speaking, him, speaking with him earlier today, and he was, just, he was excited to get out there. He was, the way he's uh, slinging that ball and the way he's like, moving around in the pocket right now with his feet and everything, he's, he's going to be a great player. 
Our referee and crew here today, we've got Joel Pearson, who's the referee. Mark Ward is the umpire. Headlinesman is Richard Whitby. Line judge, Paul Todd. Field judge, Michael Helvist. And side judge, Dave Black. And we've got Stuart Andrew on the clock as well here today as we get ready for this kickoff. Schwabisch Hall then in green today. The unicorns come all the way from Germany as they get the ball into the air. That's going to be picked up at about the five-yard line. Now taken out to the left-hand side. Oh, immediately we've got a quick return. And he's going to go all the way, it looks like. Will they catch him? They will. They catch him at the 15. What a great start for the NFL Academy. Absolutely perfect start. Looks like Kumaril Orgill on the return there. Blistering pace there, Sam. Uh, yeah, that was great. I think I think that's number 26, Eustace, there. He was... He came out, he came out firing. He was looking real, real good out there. That was a great run, great way to start, very way to start the game. Eustace Seelig, one of the quickest players on this team. So NFL Academy with Jack Troney out immediately in pistol formation, with twins to the left. He motioned Seelig into the backfield, and Troney will hand it off up the middle to Seelig, right hand side, and he's still going. Sides his way for a gain of seven. Nice opening run. Yeah, that's a great run there. You can see the academy put the guy in motion, getting him to pull out and uh, lead block there, and it was a great run. Great way to start the game. See, the pace of the NFL Academy already inside the 10-yard line now, knocking on the door of this unicorn team. I feel like expect a run here. It should be an easy, easy way to get a first down or even score. We've got a wing back to the right-hand side. They'll hand it. They'll oh. play action, middle of the field. And that is a touchdown straight away. What a great pass from Jack Troney. Moose there with a, comes up with a catch and a great touchdown. He's a player to watch and he'll definitely be great out there today. Great pass from Troney. And of course, they'd set that play action up with the run game, but go straight under the post. Yeah, that was a great RPO there. It was a great read by Jack. He was able to pick apart that linebacker when he crashed down and um, throw, it, throw it over the top to Moose. It can't go, can't go much better than that. So that's Moose Matthew Akinardi with the catch. And a great job of him bringing it in. We saw him score back at Tottenham Hurst, Hotspur Stadium back in October. He scored his first touchdown for the NFL Academy. He gets his second today on the board. Extra point is up. And it's good. So the NFL Academy with a fast start, the perfect start there, Sam. Yeah, that's, a, that's the way to start a game. That's a great way to start, set the tone, play hard, play fast, and that's what you want to do. Andy Quinn, the Irishman, with the conversion. And uh, already in a hole, Schwabish Hall, 7 nothing down. You're the quarterback coming out for Schwabish Hall. What do you want to get going for your own offense? Yeah, I feel like if I was a quarterback right now, I just want to calm everyone down, set the tone. <laughs> Get, get some completions out there and definitely just get the get back into the swing of things and just calm everyone down and have a good game. Of course, this NFL Academy is the pitch that they train on every day, right? They're very used to this, this turf. And, of course, it's a fast turf, isn't it? All those great athletes that they've got with great speed. I think Seelig's one of the quickest, isn't he, on this yeah. team? Yeah, for sure. This is a great field. Like, I've trained on this field many a times and it's a, it's a very fast field. So, Andy Quinn then will get set up to kick this ball away to Schwabish Hall. 7 nothing down if you just joined us. Welcome to the University of Loughborough. It's great to have you with us. First game of the NFL Academy season against Schwabish Hall as Andy Quinn gets this one. And it's going to be deep into the end zone. But it will be returned. The kicker slips and down at the one, it looks like. Well, the, oh, they've just had all sorts of trouble, haven't they? That was Leonard Kunz trying to get the ball out of the end zone. And he slipped at the one-yard line where Schwabish Hall will take over. It is wet here today, Sam. Yeah, it's very unfortunate there. Like, because of the rain earlier, like, I feel like it was definitely tough. Because I've seen, I've, I was walking on the field earlier to inspect it. And it was, definitely, it was definitely a bit slippy. So it's just unfortunate there from him. But he'll bounce back for sure. NFL Academy got so many star athletes. We'll give you a rundown of some of the highlights that's been happening over the over the off season for the NFL Academy because so many people now winning those scholarships to NCAA's and other places. And of course, you won a, won your own uh, scholarship out there, didn't you, Sam? We were out for, out in the states for a while. Uh, yes, I was out there for a bit, but I didn't. Uh, ended up coming to Loughborough University, so out here right now, and just happy to be back uh, watching the guys. And it's a great great game to watch, really. And you're studying. Uh, business and economics yes yes studying that here it's going well so far and um, just looking forward to what comes 
All right, let's the Schwabish Hall are going to start opening their account from under their own goalpost as they hand this one off to the left-hand side. That's a nice tackle immediately in there. Maybe a yard gain. Big number 59 for the NFL Academy. That was Luke Francis, a defensive lineman, with the tackle. It was a great tackle there. Great way to shed his block and then get to the running back straight away. That was a great, great tackle. Manuel Binder on the run. Pistol formation, Schwabish Hall. They'll go to the air this time for the first time, and it's dropped. So that we're trying to get the ball to Patrick Ganks on the on the quick kind of hitch pattern sound, but incomplete brings up third down. Yeah, it's definitely a tough situation right now. But if I was if I was a quarterback right now, I'd be looking looking at trying to get like a medium range pass in to try to get the first down and move the chains. So many weapons on this NFL Academy defense as well as offense. For sure, yeah, definitely look out for number one Arthur because he he's a player, he's a star. And he'll definitely make some plays today. So they come in in a tight formation to Schwabish Hall. A little bit of motion in the backfield. Back to pass. Pressure coming already. Gets the ball away to his left-hand side, but there's nobody there. That pressure came so quick up the middle there from the NFL Academy defense. Yeah, for sure. I feel like that was definitely, definitely a smart thing to do just to get the ball away because you don't want to end up costing more points by taking a safety in there. So three plays, no yards. And Schwabish Hall now having to punt from their own end zone this is a tough punt backed up in the end zone I feel feel like this punter is definitely a lot of pressure but I feel like he'll be able to get away and have a good punt sort of pressure that NFL Academy put teams under under the leadership of head coach Steve Hagan there's a snap punt is up low drive Debochi will field it at the 35 goes his right hand side with space oh. Arthur Debochi down the sideline and he will take it in pump return for the touchdown Arthur Debochi let's just check whether he did get in and he did, did. Debochi scores the second touchdown for the NFL Academy yeah as I said Arthur's a guy to watch he's a baller he's got a couple offers to the states I know he's going to do well today and he'll he'll definitely be out there for sure Arthur Debochi He's a great kick returner, a great intercept and returner he had at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium when they played Erasmus Hall with that now famous hurdle down the sideline. Didn't have the hurdle this time to get in, did Debochi, but gets another six points on the board as Andy Quinn comes out for the extra point. And just like that, NFL Academy score again. Quinn with the conversion. And he's through. So Andy Quinn, two of two on extra points. 14 nothing to the NFL Academy already, Sam. Yeah, I tell you what, if you're if you are the Academy, this is the start you want. You want to set the tone early, and they have done. And there's, you just got to keep on pushing, really. Arthur Debochi, the defensive back, you just saw him score the, the interception return. He competed in Destroying's one-on-one uh, competition at the Pro Bowl alongside a la- Academy alumni Khalid Adisa was there as well, and he was competing against U.S. high schoolers. And uh, did really well, but he's really making a name for himself, isn't he, Arthur? Yeah, for sure. He's definitely, he's definitely a guy you want on your team because you just give him the ball and he makes makes plays, makes plays all the time. But you can put him on offense, defense, special teams, and he'll make plays. So Schwabish Hall, two scores down. The luck's just gone against them as well. They last time they tried to get this kick return out of their own end zone, they ended up at their one yard line. They're going to want to try and do better this time. Andy Quinn to kick it to the Unicorns. This time it picked up at the seven-yard line. A little bit of space, and they'll bring it out to the 22. So Schwabish Hall with a little bit of breathing space now. Maybe they can get something going, Sam. Yeah, I think definitely with the breathing space, I feel like they've got, they definitely feel more comfortable to make some players, and uh, we'll see what happens. NFL Academy in their familiar white kit today. They also play in black. That's their home kit they're using today here at uh, their home ground, the University of Loughborough. You can see all the Academy logos. And here come the Unicorns in their green quick hit. This one is caught. Nice little turn back inside. Yeah, that's the way to start it. Definitely have a little hitch. The corner's playing off there. It was a nice little... Nice little hitch to start to start their drive and hopefully they can get some more plays going. That's Ishmael Schmidt on the reception. Picking up a gain of eight, bringing up second and two. 
for the Unicorns. Hand off up the middle this time. Good solid defence from the NFL Academy. That's Leonardus Chatsidimitru on the run. Sorry, not Leonardus. That is Theo Bendel on the run for the Unicorns. Yeah, it's definitely hard running there. It was just a nice little run just to gain, gain one more yard and they're in a good situation for third, third and one. Here comes pressure off the edge. Quarterback rolls and will complete it right close to the sticks. We'll see where they mark it. Looks like they're going to give the first down and the chains are moving. So good job from quarterback Finn Falk of the Unicorns having to escape that pressure, Sam, and, and get that ball out quick. Yeah, Finn did a great job there, escaping, the, avoiding the pressure and keeping his eyes downfield and finding the open man. Falk will go deep and put some air under it but incomplete that one trying to get the ball to Ishmael Schmidt again one of looks like it one of his favorite receivers there yeah definitely Ishmael looks like a great receiver he's got a, got the frame for it he's got the height got it looks like he's got strong hands he's definitely he should be a player to watch today Unicorns really got to make something happen in this drive if they're going to stay in touch with this high-powered NFL Academy team still in the first quarter though plenty of time left pistol formation now for Falk and the Unicorns trips to the top of your screen. They'll hand that one off and just eaten up with that line of scrimmage. What a great play that time from that defensive line. That defensive line is definitely eaten today. That was a great, great, great way to stop the run and put them in a bad situation for a second down. Thompson Umakuru with the tackle for the loss. A loss of five yards. It's going to bring up third and 15 now for the Unicorns. Falk back. Pressure coming in his face. Will air it out in the middle of the field. Tipped and intercepted. Debochi gets the interception off the tip from an NFL Academy of defender. And Debochi already with two spectacular plays. As I said, Arthur is a player to watch. He is a baller and he's just making plays and plays. That's what he does and he's what he, he'll carry on doing this, this game for sure. Debochi playing that high safety back there. And, you know, he was just the, the man on the spot to make the interception, but just great position from him and great hand-eye coordination to track that ball in the air. Yeah, definitely. After it was tipped as well to react and dive and catch that ball was definitely a spectacular thing to do. So the NFL Academy take over after the Debochi interception. Watch out for Seb here. He's, sing he's singled up on the closest side to your screen. Troni will hand it off. Nice hole up the middle. Seelig on the run on first down. It's a good hard run in there. Great way to get some yards and start off this drive. Jack Troni just thrown that one pass, which was complete for the touchdown. But most of the plays so far from NFL Academy have been on the ground. Second and short now for the Academy. Troni goes to the air, quick pass. And that's Seelig with the first down. So a clever little pass just out to the flat there, Sam. Yeah, it was a great great way to motion Eustace out to the uh, the wide out slot on the top of your screen there. And it was a great way to from empty to take advantage of that and find the open man. Because Eustace was out there, just did a little hitch, and he definitely he just got the yards he needed. It was so they haven't moved the sticks yet of the referee, so we're just checking the delay on the game here flag is on the field looks like the academy are going to be marching back so they will march him back half the distance to the goal line so it's a big penalty and that will put them behind the sticks for this uh, second down wipes off that reception from Eustace Selig Second and long, Sam. What are you doing here? Just something to set you up for third down? Oh uh, yeah, if I was Jack here, I'd definitely be wanting to have a nice little pass, see what see what the receivers can do and get it to your playmakers really. So 
So maybe the Unicorns can get this high-powered NFL Academy offense off the field. They've got a chance now. Backed up the Academy. Jack Tony with two receivers to the bottom of your screen. He'll go to... Uh, go to that bottom of your screen just picks up a few to give him a little bit of breathing space and make that third down a little bit more manageable yeah Ben Lax there did a great job of catching the ball and um, just running running and getting some yak because they put him in a good situation for third down now and it's in a better spot to get the move the chains so third and ten for Troni is the challenge on this down And he will go picked. That one's intercepted by the Unicorns. Troni with a rare mistake. And they will go down the sideline. And they will take it in. The Unicorns are on the board. They score quickly. They get their own interception, Sam. Yeah, that's a great way to bounce back, you know. Like, after the Academy set the tone in those first two drives, that's a great way to bounce back. And it's going to be an interesting game for sure. You can definitely tell the Trubbishville Unicorns did their homework last year. And they're definitely... Um, definitely putting in the they put in the hours and it paid off can't write them off Schwabish Hall Unicorns come back into this game yeah it, it was definitely unfortunate for Jack there he was trying to squeeze it into one of his receivers but just unfortunately couldn't get it in the right space at the right time but I know he'll bounce back for sure look like he threw the ball slightly behind the receivers Jan Marton as they go for two to Schwabish Hall they'll hand it off but the NFL Academy having none of that tackle behind the line of scrimmage yeah, that was a great play there. Great way to wrap up and get him down before he gets into the end zone. Well, let's just check whether that was a touchdown. I don't believe it was. It looks like I think the Jan Martin went out of bounds. So it's Schwabish Hall now going, trying to get the ball over the top. The NFL Academy do have the opportunity to defend this, so they didn't get into the end zone. But still, they're in a great, great, uh, great spot to have a chance to score here. They're definitely they're in the red zone right now. They're, they're looking dangerous. They just went for the end zone there, and let's see what they can do. So they're at their 15-yard line going in. Third down now, and about 13 for Schwabish Hall after the interception to try and get a score on the board of their own. Trips to the top of your screen. Some movement on the line, and that'll be a flag. So Finn Falk with the hard count. Looks like it might have pulled the academy off. Yeah, I think the tango there just expected them to run and unfortunately didn't get it. And So it's offside against the NFL Academy. Uh, so Schwabish Hall inched that little bit closer to the end zone. Last time these two teams met, Sam, you were a quarterback. This was actually your last game as the uh, NFL starting quarterback, wasn't it? Yes, it was a great game when I was playing. It was, it was definitely, definitely a great way to end my career playing these guys, and it was just, and it was a great team to play. I'm fortunate there, but and complete that time from Schwabish Hall. Last time two teams met, it was 34 to the NFL Academy, 8 to Schwabish Hall back on 19th of March, 2023. And it's a great way for the NFL Academy to open their year. The series of games will coming up and we'll, cut, we'll let you know when those are coming up and who the opponents are going to be as we get to this third and eight. Schwabish Hall just getting the signals in from the sideline. Yeah, if I was Shrubbish Hall here, I'd definitely want to utilise my receivers or running backs, get into the end zone, maybe maybe throw a pass or something here. Penalty against the NFL Academy is going to give Schwabish Hall the first down. So, right about the five-yard line now for Schwabish Hall. Motion. Falk will look Ooh. to try and complete that in a little slot, but he's incomplete, trying to get the ball there to Konstantin Stricker. Yeah, it was just unfortunate there. It was just a quick slant pattern into the inside, but unfortunately just went through his hands and he wasn't able to bring it in. Still, they got that fresh set of downs from the penalties, so second down. They really need to punch it in here, don't they, Sam, to keep keep it close? Oh, yeah, for sure. This is, they want this to 
bring back momentum to their side and definitely do a good job. Falk will run to his right-hand side and he'll be taken down. Maybe picked up a couple. Yeah, it's hard running there. It's definitely, he definitely wants to keep the ball protected though. He was holding the ball up like he was going to throw it, but I don't think, yeah, I think he changed his mind last second and he just tried to t tuck it and get in the end zone. But it's unfortunate there, but it brings up, uh, they definitely look closer. Third down with two shots to get into the end zone then. You think they will go for it on that fourth down. There is Falk. He will go over to his right-hand side. That's a touchdown. The Unicorns do get into the end zone. And that's a great play by Konstantin Stricker with the touchdown. It was great solid hands there. It was a great whip route to come inside and then cut back outside. It was a great pattern, pattern of routes and that's definitely a way to bounce back. So the Unicorns on the board after the interception. They do manage to get it in. And that will give them some confidence. I had to travel all the way in Germany. Obviously, they are not playing on their home turf. And it gives them some confidence that they can compete with these NFL Academy as the extra point goes up. And it's good. So, yeah. the Unicorns on the board with a touchdown in the first. It's 14 to the NFL Academy at 7 to Schwabish Hall. It's definitely a great game. It's heating up here in the first quarter. And hopefully it, gets, uh, hopefully it gets, keeps like this for the whole game. and be an interesting game to watch. Yeah, so Troni, last time he was out, you know, through that interception, he'll want to come out and settle himself down. Played well so far, just that one mistake, really. Yeah, I know Jack. Jack will be all right. He's, he's got a calm mindset. He's got short-term memory. He just needs to wipe that play out of his mind and just play his game because he, he's, got the talent to, he's got the talent to pick that defense apart and score some points. So Stricker with the three-yard touchdown catch from Falk. Puts the Unicorns on the board and the NFL Academy will come out to receive for the second time today. So far it's been a competitive game. You can tell, you can tell the Unicorns definitely did their homework over this past year and they're definitely, definitely looking a lot stronger, faster and definitely looking like a tough competition. It's great to see. One of the challenges for the NFL game is uh, for the NFL team is just finding academies across Europe and in the states that they can come to play. So it's great that they have this rivalry with Schwabish Hall as the ball goes into the air again. This one fielded at the five, looking for the left-hand side. Seelig dodging and weaving, he gets his way. So dangerous, isn't he? Every time he, he touches the ball, he's a great player. He's so compact and so like, he's just a fast switch player. He's definitely just an athlete that can get out there and make plays. Only five foot six ceiling, but has so much power and balance. For sure. Like he at the combine at their previous combine, they he tested very well. He on his bench press he he was like second and he, he's definitely a strong, strong running back. So Troni out. Last time he threw that interception. This time he'll hand this one off. That's a good defensive play. That's a great tackle from Noah. Loriori. That was a great way to shed unicorns. his block and um, make a play, make a play and wrap him up because he's a tough guy to get down. No gain on that down second and ten for the academy. Run again, right hand side, great block on the edge, and then a nice tackle coming in as well. So it looked like he was going to break that one. But it was defensive back Manuel Binder that comes in to bring Selig down. Yeah, Adrian there had a hard run. He was trying to get outside. I feel like if he bounced that, bounced that player outside, he was gone. But unfortunately, he cut back inside and got tackled. Third and five. Troni will spin round and get the ball into space in the flat great tackle again from the unicorns they like that one on the sideline yeah definitely for sure jack there faking the play to the right and then coming back to the left that was definitely a definitely a way to draw off a play but you can see the unicorns didn't get fooled by it they made him made him pay and wrapped up and tackled and now it's fourth down fired up the schwabish hall defense after their interception their offense goes in for a touchdown and momentum with schwabish hall at the moment as they hold 
NFL Academy to this fourth down. Looks like they're going to come out and punt right at midfield. Andy Quinn out. And they will kick it. Looks like a partial block. And it barely goes two yards. NFL Academy dive on it. Well, what a sequence of events for the Unicorns there. They get the great tackle on third down and almost fully block the punt. But it only went two yards. Yeah, I feel like that's definitely a momentum changer. And that's definitely a great thing for the Unicorns there. Tip, tipping the ball and um, getting good field, field position. So the Unicorns will take over just outside NFL Academy territory at the 45-yard line. 90-yard field here at the University of Loughborough. Falk back to work at the 45. He's got Bjorn Stack in the backfield with him. Falk will go down. Instant pressure. Ball is out. And they are still scrabbling under there to try and get it. We'll let the referees work this one out. Ball came out. Wasn't clear where the Falk was down. But the now a flag goes in as well. Not entirely clear, Sam, whether that knee was down before that ball came out. Yeah, I don't know. The pocket was collapsing very quickly on that play. And he was just unlucky there. I don't know what really happened, but... It looks like Mesh came up with the ball there. Yeah, Arthur. Arthur Meshesh. Meshesh Arthur, rather, comes up with the ball. Yeah, it's a great play from him. He's definitely one to watch as well on defence because he, he's a hard-hitting linebacker who makes plays all over the field. Now that flag is still down on the field. So great defensive play from NFL Academy. Ball was knocked out. That's the way to bounce back from that touchdown, just to set the tone on defence again and uh, get a big hit like that and turn over the ball. So the NFL Academy offence will come back out on the field. There will be a penalty against them, which will take them back a little way. And that came after the interception, after the fumble recovery, rather. Well, hang on a minute. Yeah, the uh, NFL Academy offence is out on the field, so I'm just checking that one. Penalty was against the NFL Academy. So after the fumble, they'll take them back 10 yards and they will take over. Pretty much where they started with that punt just before that series, a uh, little sequence of play. Yeah, I definitely feel like they just got to wipe that out of their minds now and just continue moving forward and start to dominate this game. Both defences really playing well now. Unicorn defence came up with that uh, fourth down pump block and, and then the NFL Academy defence giving the ball right back to the guys in white as this time Seelig will find some room on the left hand side and yeah it was uh, a great run there by Eustace he was able to shed a tackle there and gain gain a first down Like that's what you want to see keep the momentum moving in their favour and let's see if they can score before the first quarter ends Seelig picked up the first down he'll get the ball again same play takes his time patient now finds room and he's down the sideline and they will just get him out of bounds so it was 26 who knocks 26 out of bounds Seelig great balance skill pace picks up another first down moving the chains in the academy going really fast now yeah that's a great run again just keep on feeding the guy who's making the plays and they'll end up scoring Gorgay da Costa on watch the tackle there. watch there but you could be on for a fade right there. Seb Harris is going to take oh. the ball. You called it, Sam. <laughs> Sebastian Harris, but there is a flag down. So I don't think that's going to count. But Sam, what did you see there? Just that you, you know, you got the same eyes <laughs> Troni's got. Yeah, I was just seeing the way they lined up on defense. They were playing, uh, it was pretty much a one on one matchup. And then when it's a one on one matchup with Seb Harris, I'm taking that every day of the week. And I think Jack is as well. And it, <laughs> it showed there. Sebastian Harris scored so many times for the NFL Academy and gets stronger, more powerful, faster each time. They're going to call ineligible player downfield number 65 of this NFL Academy offensive line. So that's going to wipe that touchdown off the board and it will be a 10-yard penalty against the NFL Academy, which will take him back. But still, it was a great play by Seb and I feel like that was definitely a confidence booster for him and he can make more plays today. It was Joseph Kirby who was in a place he shouldn't have been just managed to escape from that line of scrimmage and you're not allowed to do that so still first down from the NF for the NFL Academy now but it, they're going to be 
from their 18 yard line to try and get this ball in score is 14 to 7 so just the one score in it lacks in motion to the bottom of your screen Troni handles the ball well and he will get it to Lax and Lax yeah. will pick up a gain of about six yeah Ben did a great job there of motioning to the other side Jack saw that they were just playing one uh, one corner over the top of him and he just took the 10 out as he was playing so far off that was a great smart smart throw by Jack to move move the chains and definitely get closer to that end zone did well to handle the snap as well as the sun begins to shine here on the NFL Academy second and seven Troni hands it, Selig, nice block up the middle and Selig untouched into the end zone, <laughs> touchdown, Eustace Selig. That was a great run by Eustace there, he practically got untouched, like he just went straight down that hole, the O-line made a massive, massive gap for him to burst through and he made, he made him pay because that was a great, great touchdown. So a 15-yard run for Selig, up the middle, it's a great offensive line. Obviously, the star of that offensive line last season was Daniel Akin Kunmi. We'll talk a little bit about him, but they've got other players coming in now to fill his shoes. For sure, definitely. That O-line's looking strong. They've definitely got a couple guys going to the next level, and they're looking good. Quinn on the extra point. This time, no good, so Quinn misses. Yeah, I think there was something wrong with the hold there or something. Quinn couldn't get uh, correct contact on it, but he'll be all right. So the NFL Academy pull out to a 20-7 to lead now as the sun beginning to shine. Finally, Sam, we get some sun. What yes. do you make of these first uh, few exchanges between uh, the NFL Academy and the Unicorn so far? Yeah, I feel like it's definitely a competitive game. It's definitely, it's definitely starting to heat up now as the uh, clock winds down in the first quarter and I can't wait to see what happens as the game carries on. NFL Academy will kick back to the Unicorns. Some great victories last year for this NFL Academy team. They beat uh, Erasmus Hall back at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, 35 nothing, and they had that big statement victory as well against the IMG Academy, 31-14. So a real great end to the last season, and this is the first game of their current season as that one. Quinn will boot into the end zone for a touchback as the hits still continue to go in on the field. Yeah, that was a great nudge by um, Andy there. You just put it back into the corner unfortunately it went into the end zone so they moved to the 25 but definitely see what the unicorns have in offer now because they need to set the tone if they can get another score here they can put, put themselves in a good position to get follow into the second quarter so first and 10 the unicorns come out two scores down but their offense has got their own score on the board stricker with a three-yard touchdown catch last time they were on the field so they know they can move the ball trips to the bottom of the screen now handoff still trucking big running back for the unicorns and he's going to pick up seven yards that's great hard running there great way to carry on running while he's trying to shed tackles and it puts him in a great position for second down johannes Lunds on the run Sorry, it was De Costa on the run. Delfield De Costa, number 25, as Falk goes to his left-hand side and will complete the immediate tackle coming in for, for the NFL Academy from Camrell Orgill. Great way to get close to the first down there. It was just, he's just taking the smart, smart um, plays there and getting the ball out of his hands quickly. And that's what you want to do as a quarterback, just to get into a rhythm and uh, start making some throws. Makes it a nice manageable third down for Falk. going to go left hand side receiver twists his body around a great reception coverage was good but the receiver just did a good job of twisting his body around and flagged down though on that one so we'll see what the flag is Sam but it's a spectacular catch yeah that was a great great catch great throw as well to put it back shoulder there was uh, the only place he could put it and he, ma he made him pay on that because that was a great catch great great completion so it was offside against the NFL Academy, so that great catch will stand. The Unicorns move the chains. Yeah, they're definitely building momentum here, and let's see what they can do. Run, run, run. 
run up the middle. That's a tackle from behind that time from the NFL Academy. Did well, did Kevin Benton coming in, number 56, the linebacker for the NFL Academy, to drag that runner down. Just a one-yard gain. He's a great player. He hits hard. He's definitely one to watch on that defensive line because he can shed a tackle and get to the quarterback or running back very quickly. A great tracking speed from the backside that time from Benton. Falk now second and nine. Takes a snap pressure again. And he will try and avoid the sack when he can't. Ball out again. And again, the NFL Academy, just they bring so much pressure off that defensive line. Let's see who's got the football. And NFL Academy with another forced fumble turnover. That one is recovered by Matty Kruger. He makes his presence felt, that great defensive end linebacker. Yeah, that was just a great play, great all around because... It's a way to shed the ball and then come up with the ball after. Like that's, that's what you want to see. That's a highlight play for sure. So Matty Kruger with the big play in the NFL Academy. These defences really exchanging blows. The NFL Academy now with two force fumbles recovered. And relentless pressure on Falk in that backfield. Yeah, for sure. I feel like if I was Falk, I want to get the ball out quickly and start making some plays out wide to ease up on that defensive line. Troni. Look like a little bit of movement on the offensive line. Troni will roll right and go deep, but incomplete. Yeah, that was just unfortunate there. I feel like he had his guy downfield, Moose, but unfortunately they just uh, couldn't make it happen there. Obviously came out with that one of, one of their scripted plays, Sam. You know, do they script the plays the NFL Academy coming into these games? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like the first 20, 30 plays... You'll go over and walkthroughs and stuff like that and then practice them so you know what you're doing. And then after that, you can, um, depending on what the defense is doing, you, you'll be able to adjust. So it's just like they're probably going through a set amount of plays right now. They know what they know the routine and they should be able to complete them and uh, complete them and make some efficient gains. We're hitting Q2 now as we come to the end of that first quarter with the NFL Academy up 20 to 7. And do they, how do the plays come in, Sam? Are they signalled in? Do you have a helmet, a uh, microphone? How does it work? Uh, yeah, so at this level, it's just all hand signals. So there'll be guys signalling formation, signalling motion, signalling plays. And then it's Jack's job to pick that up and relay it to the team in, on the field right, as, it, as they are so he can communicate with them and then make the play happen. Giacomo Troni, Jack Troni, number 18, Great to have the insight from Sam on how this offense is put together. We'll come back to him and ask him some more questions about that in a minute as Lax goes in motion. Second and 10 is the opening play of this Q2 into the flat with nice manages to avoid the tackle and get down the sideline for some extra yards. That's some a great, great play, play by Joey there. He was able to shed that tackle immediately and then get, gain, gain the first down. Like That's what you want to see. Joey Williams, the running back into the flat, picks up a gain of 20, and that will take him down to the Unicorn 25-yard line. Three receivers to the top. We'll Ooh. try and get it to Lax, but just too high. It looked like it just uh, yeah, I feel like aired on him on that one. I feel like there was just a bit of miscommunication there. I feel like... Jack saw the pressure coming off the edge and he was just trying to get the ball out quick and I don't think it was relayed to Bain quick enough and unfortunate there to the miscommunication ended up in an incomplete play. Do you have a choice? Like, Can you kill a play if you don't like it and go to a second play or, or is it just run the play we give you? Uh, yeah, for sure. So the way if I was in right now, I'd be seeing the way the defense is lining up and what, the, what play we're doing and I can either, if I like it, I'll stick with it. If not, I can change it and then relay it to the receivers and O-line and running backs Troni getting the play in from the sideline there you can see the signal coming in Williams changes position Troni looks to his left loads of time beautifully thrown football and that is gorgeous Jack Troni into the end zone for the fourth touchdown of the NFL <laughs> Academy I mean that the, the time that Troni had to throw that ball and then beautifully lofted pass for, for sure yeah that was a great great way to uh, score a touchdown the scheme there uh, of having um, Lats come underneath to get into the end zone was great and the, the pump fake really fooled him and it was a great way to score a touchdown so Ben Lax on the board 
for the NFL Academy. And Quinn comes in for the extra point. NFL Academy really putting down the, the gas here early on this uh, Q2. Oof, but the Unicorns block that one. Can they scoop it up? Ball is still bobbling about and they're still chasing it down. Trying to oh. pick it up is number four, who is Leonard Kuntz, who chased that ball about 30 yards after the block. Because, of course, if you scoop it up and you can run it back, you get your own two points, but uh, not able to... Uh, not able to scoop that one up, but still the block, great play from the Unicorns. For sure, yeah, that was a great way to come off the edge of that um, uh, the PAT and definitely make the block happen because that, that was a great play. Great to see the Unicorns fighting for everything. Their, their heads aren't going to drop. They played the NFL Academy, what, two years previous to this game coming in, and so they've, had, they've played this uh, NFL Academy a number of times. Yeah, for sure. I, they, definitely know, they definitely know how we play, and it's, it's becoming a great rivalry between these two teams and it's great to see how this game's growing and great to see how this rivalry is going Quinn coming in again for the kick 26-7 now to the NFL Academy deep kick no return ball all bounce out of the end zone and come out to the 20 yard line yeah I was Trini uh, with that that pass there I mean just speak to you know how good he's been and, and his development over the last few years for sure yeah Jack's Jack came in and like from day one he's been able to sling that ball and just the way he's been able to learn the game over the years he's been here and like understand the offense and command this offense now he's he's doing a great job he's a great job of leading the team as well and just he's put he's showing it as well on the field he's been able to make plays make consistent plays and score touchdowns and score points, which, will, which, which will, wins games and will hopefully get them out to the States. So difficult if you play that quarterback position to win those scholarships out in the States. So much competition as Falk now will dump this one off into the flat for a pickup of about three. NFL Academy defense so quick, aren't they, to close down and, and get the runners down? Yeah, for sure. I definitely feel like that's a testament to the practice practice they put in because they're, they're told to see ball, get ball as fast as they can and they're just hunting for that ball, trying to get it. So the Unicorns do pick up a few on that. Second and six for Folk. This under-20 squad from Germany. Uh, play action, immediate pressure. Falk does a good job rolling out, but just there's nobody there. The only the only players out there on that right-hand side are NFL Academy defenders. Yeah, it's definitely half a fault there because he, he had no one really. He, he just did the sensible thing and threw it out of bounds. That was a smart play by him, just to uh, not eat away at what he's already gained. And they're close to getting the first down there, so we'll see what happens on the next play. Still a manageable third down for the Unicorns to try and get a score back against this NFL Academy team I want to ask Sam about what a day in the life of an NFL Academy you know student athlete is as we get into this uh, game we'll come back to him in a second on that but here's a key third down for Schwabish Hall Falk can see the pressure coming off the top of the edge there from those white jerseys and just gets a signal in from the sideline. Pressure again. He will go to the left-hand side. Dangerous pass, but caught. What a great catch. They've made some great catches. That is Kern Kovechi with the sideline catch to move the sticks. Uh, yeah, that was great by Falk there to uh, avoid the pressure coming off the edge, to feel that and escape it, avoid it. And keep his eyes downfield and look for his um, open receiver was great. And to hit him, it, hit him it for the first down as well was a great, great thing for him. And is that a design play, you know, to move the pocket like that, to shift the pocket? Or is he just kind of winging it as he, as he sees the pressure coming? Uh, so for me, that looked like it was all instinct. Like he was just, he felt the pressure coming. He had to avoid it, get out. And he just had to find his open man downfield. High snap for the Unicorns on this first down. Falk does a good job of fielding it and it's a few yards for Theo Bendel yeah you can see Falk there is definitely commanding the offense well and he's definitely keeping them keeping it in this game second and five 
as the signals come into the NFL Academy defense. That four-man defensive line, two linebackers, five DBs out there. Focal play action to the flat left-hand side. And again, the NFL Academy hunt that player down. A few yards, maybe a yard picked up by Konstantin Stricker. Yeah, that was a great tackle there. It was a great way to give it a, give a hard hit and um, get the receiver down. Right at midfield for the Unicorns. Trying to get back into this one. 26-7 down. Third down. Falk with a nice play over the middle. It's Stricker again, and he has to take a shot. But he will hold on to the ball. Took a shot from Max Bartholomew, the defensive back, a German player. Yeah, it was a great tackle there. Great throw as well. To be able to seed that ball in on the slant route to get the first down was definitely a great throw. So the Unicorns keep the drive alive. Slant from Stricker. Offside. 83 of the defence. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. It's good to hear from our referee, Joel Pearson. They'll move the sticks through the reception of Stricker. So Falk doing a good job here as they move into NFL Academy territory. Handoff up the middle. Pick up a couple. That one's beyond stack on the run. Yeah, it was great running, great tackling, great football all around them. Second and six. Nice drive. It's their opening drive of the Unicorns in this uh, Q2. Yeah, it's definitely taking some time off the clock as well, which is what they want to keep that academy offense off the ball. Falk will go to an open receiver. Bartholomew trying to track him down, but he can't. Touchdown, Unicorns. That is Ishmael Schmidt with the touchdown. That is a great touchdown there. The way he, the way he uh, was able to hit that receiver in stride on the little post route on the far side of the screen was a great, great ball. Great Great, great play all around there because the way to finish that play as well was excellent. Excellent playing from him. So Ishmael Schmidt showing some great speed under the post and some good blocking downfield to ensure that NFL Academy couldn't rally to make the tackle. Explosive play. 35-yard touchdown for Schmidt. It's definitely heating up in this quarter. Extra point is up and good. So... Schwabish Hall with their second score on the board. They pull within 12 points of the NFL Academy here in Q2. And great to see a competitive game, Sam. Yeah, for sure. The rivalry is definitely heating up now, and I'm excited to see what happens next. Both offences playing well. Seem to have got going of the Unicorns. Both defences coming in, making hits, forcing fumbles. You know, we've had great kick returns as well, so... Got everything to show here. The NFL Academy season kicks off and they're just an exciting team to watch whoever they bring these international teams over and there's always excitement in the games uh, and we hope that you'll join us throughout this season as the NFL Academy continue to bring opponents from all over the world here to the UK. And Sam, what's it like playing in that international setup with, you know, 16 different languages on this NFL Academy team? Does that, is that sometimes a challenge or is it something you can overcome? Um, it's definitely a great bonding experience. Like to sit, uh, to sit down with guys from all over the world is just, is crazy, and you just, you meet uh, mates for life who are just all around the world, and you're just able to communicate through football, really, and it's just a great thing to do. Ball is up. Unicorns will drill this one. Justus Selig will pick it up, and great speed right hand side finds a hole, cuts back. Selig oh, what to the run. ten, to the five. Scores, kick return, Eustace Seelig, 95 yards, looking for flags, and there are two down on the field, so it might be coming back. But what pace from Seelig. That is a way to bounce back for sure. Like de Definitely after that touchdown from the Unicorns there, that's, that's a great way to bounce back and to set the tone now. Flag is down. You can see head referee there, Joel Pearson. Speaking to Richard Whitby. But yeah, on that play, he definitely got some great blocks. Great blocks from the, the, the whole special teams Personal unit there. To be able to find the Number two of the return team. 
Penalty is 15 yards from the flag. First and 10 NFL Academy. So, a whole... Who are just all around the world. And NFL Academy will retain the ball. Here's the replay on that. And we'll see if we can get you a replay in a second. We've got to get back to that live action. So used to see league still with a great return. What was it, a 50 yard return with the penalty? So the NFL Academy will get the ball, Sam, at the first and 10. But that C League touchdown will be wiped off the board. Yeah, that's just unfortunate there. Like, that was a great play, but it's just, it'll be great to see what they can do now on offense. Troni with some motion handoff Justis left hand side good gain again on first down pick up of seven second and short upcoming yeah it was a great run there great way to motion the tight end into the box and crack crack the crack the edge he's definitely uh, living up to the number 87 living up for Peter Clark yeah 87 is the German tight end Dominic Tietz for the NFL Academy with the nice block. Two backs in the backfield joins Troni. Now more motion. Oh, high snap. Troni, it will bounce into his hands. Goes deep under the post. Seb oh. can't hold on to that one. Seb Harris. So many times a target for Troni. But how well did Troni do there? The snap goes over his head, ball bounces, picks it up, just says, all right, well, just launch it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The way uh, Jack was able to keep composed there and keep his, keep his eyes downfield as soon as he got the ball and find his open receiver, it's just a testament to how well he's improved and he's just excelling every day. I've seen you do the same thing, you know, no panic. I remember with IMG there was a high snap one over your head and you had to, to track back to get hold of it. What goes through your mind as a quarterback? Well, I'll come to you after this play. Uh, about what goes through your mind as a quarterback when that snap goes high. Uh, let's look at this third down now. This is a handoff up the middle. Trying to pick up five yards, keep the pile moving. Some nice pushing from the offensive line, and that will pick up the first down. Yeah. So what goes through your mind, Sam, when that ball goes sailing over your head? Uh, first of all, is panic. Like First of all, you're just like, I, w I need to get this ball back because otherwise... You could you could put your team in a lot of trouble, but after you've got the ball, it's just to get your eyes downfield and find your open receivers and let them make the play. Troni with the first down. Handoff, no hole, and that's good defending. So the Unicorns arrive. That was Leonard Kuntz who was there for the first contact. Drags his man down. Pick up of a yard. Second and nine. Academy swapping in fresh running backs. Keep this backfield fresh. Troni. Looking to his right hand side. So much time comes back to his left. And oh. Seb Harris in the back of the end zone. Touchdown. And that is another score. What a beautiful pass again from Troni to Harris this time. Yeah, that was a great, great throw from Jack there. He said with his last read, he was going through his progressions right to left and he just was able to find the open man and Seb was able to pick up this time and score the touchdown. What strikes is just so much time Troni has back there. I mean, as, uh, you know, the, we know that Troni's got skills, but that offensive line just giving him so much opportunity just to throw the ball. Yeah, it's definitely nice having a, a great offensive line and I feel like definitely after this game, uh, Jack definitely owes some of that offensive line some food or some reward for how well he's been treated in this game. Here's the replay now. You can see Troni dropping back. Look at the time. There's no one close. Now a little bit of pressure. And there's Seb Harris under the posts. So quick, Seb. And uh, gets his, both his feet in. A little bit of limping coming off that play. But does enough to get the touchdown. Yeah, I hope he's all right. Seb Harris is now, you can see him coming off the field. So he was limping after that reception. Maybe a little bit of a calf twinge, but uh, seems to be okay. Yeah, Seb's a good player. He'll be all right. Quinn coming in for the extra point. Ball is up. Kick is good. So Quinn missed the last one. Got this, got this one. NFL Academy 33, Schwabish Hall 14. 
high scoring match this one I think this was the close to the score we saw last time and we're only in the first half for sure yeah it's definitely heating up now and it'll be exciting to see what happens later in this later in this quarter and falling into the second half what happens in that off season Sam you know you got the, the break you don't have the game the last game you played was back in October against uh, Erasmus Hall what happens during that off season is it is it do you get a break or is it still relentless in terms of those training sessions? Yeah, I don't think there was there was a break, but definitely they're in the gym 24-7, just trying to get stronger, faster, quicker. And it's definitely a testament because they had their combine just recently and they were able to put up some excellent numbers and show what the academy has like in their athletes and everything. Get more. It's great to have Sam here. We can get some more stories from him as this game progresses. Sam Fenton joining me, Carl Walker, you're in the booth for this one. Sam Fenton, QB1 for NFL Academy for so many years. If you just joined us, it's the Unicorns who will pick this kick return up. And there's a nice little seam up the middle there. Decent return that time. That was some good running from Ishmael Schmidt, who was the touchdown scorer for the Unicorns. Obviously one of their star players, and he brings it out with some good field position. He's definitely a player to watch. The way he was able to find that lane there and just attack it and get get through and gain a couple of extra yards was definitely a great thing to watch some great players on this unicorn team Noel Portnacken uh, who's not playing today because he's just won it was a player for the unicorns uh, he's just won a, a scholarship to the University of Florida which is massive for this unicorn team so they, they have some great players on this unit whistles blow as the Unicorns come out to start this drive. I they just want to get the right football in. Unicorns will start this one at their own 30. Still some time left, Sam, in this uh, second quarter, in this, in this first half, to try and get something on the board. Yeah, if they're able to score here, they'll put themselves in a great position to get into, uh, to have a chance in the second half run to the left hand side to start this drive picks up a gain of about well give them two the clock's winding down here so it's a thing to note so they want to get some plays off fast so they can be able to get down into the red zone and uh, hopefully score Falk with the snap will go to that left uh, hand side for him and that is a pick up from their wide receiver Matthias Vogel with his first reception for yeah. the Unicorns. That's definitely a smart play there, keeping it keeping it to the out routes and stuff and getting out of bounds to stop that clock is definitely a smart thing to do here and just to save some time. When you're playing that uh, four minute, two minute drill, Sam, is it, uh, is it, what's it feel like in the huddle? Is it just, you know, execute, stay calm? Uh, yeah, nothing really changes really. You're just trying to execute at a high level and make sure everything Everything stays the same and make sure you just execute on offense, really. Falk with the hard count. He's trying to draw the NFL Academy offside, but it looks like the Unicorns are going to come back. That? Offense number five. Five-yard penalty. Replay third down. So the NFL Academy stay disciplined. It's the Unicorns that will march back. Third and ten now for Falk. Yeah, if he's a, be, uh, able to make a play here, it'd be a great thing to do. So try and get that first down, try and get like a ten yard out or something to the outside would be definitely the play to go here. He's got Stricker, he's got Matthias Vogel. He'll go to Vogel and he will not be able to hold on. So That's just unfortunate there. The timing didn't match up. He was he threw that ball a bit too early. I think he felt a bit of pressure there and just tried to have, release the ball and give the receiver a chance. But unfortunately, I don't think the receiver got his head around in time and it wasn't able to work out. Punt team will come on. I can see Brian Winters down there on the sideline with uh, Sebastian Harris there. Yeah, Brian's a cool guy. He is definitely a receiver to watch. Unfortunately, I don't think he could play today, but he'll definitely be back for sure. And when he's back, the, co the combination of him and Seb is a deadly, deadly combination. Seb with a touchdown on the board already. Punt team out for the Unicorns. High snap. Just manages to field it and get the ball away. Kicks it into space. It will hit an academy player. Ooh. And uh, it was uh, Kruger, I believe, that just jumped on it just to save any opportunity for that to be 
That was great reactions. Covered there. by the unicorns. Yeah, sorry, Sam. Go ahead. Great reactions from, I think it's Kevin there, to be able to pick up the ball and uh, maintain the ball in the academy offense. So there's a flag down where the punt was kicked. So I didn't see any contact on the kicker initially. But referee's obviously closer to the action. And they're asking for a decision from the unicorn sideline. Let's hear from our referee. Running into the kicker by the defence. Five yard penalty. Replay fourth down. So it is running into the kicker. So it's uh, running into the kicker rather than roughing the kicker. So it's a five-yard penalty rather than a 15-yarder, but still gives the opportunity for the unicorns to come back out and re-kick the ball. Ben Lax back to return, along with dangerous danger man Arthur Debochi. <laughs> yeah, both of them. You don't want the ball in their hands because they can make plays when, whenever they've got the ball. High snap again. Punter does well. This one's a bigger kick. It's going in Debochi's direction. We'll take a bounce and Debochi will just let it roll and it will take a nice unicorn roll to the 11 yard line of the NFL Academy where Troni will come out with a little bit of time left in this first half for the NFL Academy to put something together. But if you're coming out this field position 11 yards out, Sam, what's your thinking as a QB? Yeah, so if, I, if this was me, I would definitely want to be running some outside zone here get to the outside trying to get stop the clock to give us time to get down the field and score some score some plays but also a thing to mention here is i feel like they could be could be chance to go for it deep i don't rule out jack throwing it deep to moose or arthur there like i reckon this could be could be where it, they score arthur debochi on the field in offense now number one at the bottom of your screen so debochi comes out as a receiver and he will motion and he'll be a fake for the run up the middle that's Williams so they fake it to Debochi hand a, it to Williams nice little play there Sam yeah that's a great run by Joey you saw the gap and he just attacked it attacked it head down like he was running through a brick wall and he was able to make a play got a unicorn player on the ground one of their defensive linemen looks like it's Jonas Ellison who's gone down so we hope he's okay medics are with him as we take a knee here so good run from Williams, and I suppose that opens up your offense as you come to the end of this first half. You get you you try something on first down. If it works and goes well, that builds momentum. If not, then you can just play it a little bit more safe. Yeah, for sure. I definitely feel like the academy are going to utilize their full offense here, be able to run some plays deep in the playbook and make something happen. Because I feel like they've definitely got the players and playmakers to make some very crucial plays here in the second quarter as the clock's winding down. Got a lot of games coming up for this uh, NFL Academy, some fixtures and events. And uh, Saturday, March 23rd is the next time the Academy are out. They're playing Düsseldorf Panthers under-20s in Düsseldorf this time. And, and what's it like going abroad and taking the team abroad? Is that a great, a great, uh, uh, you know, experience for the guys? It is for sure. It's definitely a great experience having a business trip out there. Like as we go out there, it's just strictly business. Like we're out there to play football and dominate. And I think it's shown so far. And hopefully these boys can go out there and in Dusseldorf next weekend on March 23rd and sh uh, show what we can do. So back to the field, back to the live action as uh, Jonas Ellison makes his way to the sideline. He looks okay. So Debochi is still on the field, top of your screen. Is that second receiver in in that trips formation as Troni will take the snap on first down. Motions Williams to his left-hand side. Troni with the snap. Play action. Drills it to Seelig, it looks like. And a nice little play as well. That was a great To pick play. up I another first down. Ben Lax there with the, pulls up with the catch. That was a great play by him. Oh, no, Adrian. That was a great play by Adrian there to make a play happen. I think Jack checked the play there. He changed the play to make sure he was open because he saw the busting coverage there and was able to make a good play. Troni this time will go to the flat and he will hit his receiver for a gain of five. Yeah, it was a nice screenplay there to set up Adrian with a nice lane. Unfortunately, the unicorn player there was able to see it really, really quickly and was able to stop it before it took any damage. 
Adrian Maluka with the last two receptions and running back for the NFL Academy. Yeah, that, that's another great guy there. He, he can play every year. He can play receiver, quarterback and running back. He can. He's, he's definitely a Met playmaker. This time it's Ben Lax on the end of round. He will find the edge. Lax breaking tackles down the sideline. He'll be bumped out of bounds. But that, not before he picks up a gain of 30 yards. Ben Lax on the end of round with some tough running. Ben Lax does some damage. He is a great player. I love the way he plays. He, he plays hard and physical, and he's definitely got a safe pair of hands. Like, he is definitely a great slot player to have. Well, this drive, impressive from the NFL Academy, going quick, running all sorts of plays, using all sorts of players on the like, pass watch, and on the ground. Watch Moose here up top, because I reckon it could be coming to him. On it. Troni will go to the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Just overthrows his man. Yeah, there was... Great play by Lax again. He he shook his shook his DB up and he had a nice little corner out to go to the back of the end zone. Unfortunately, I don't think it could have it matched up with the timing and everything. But it's definitely a great play to watch. NFL Academy camped at the Unicorn 13-yard line, 33-14 ahead. But they're relentless. The NFL Academy never take the foot up the foot off the gas. Just keep coming. Yeah, for sure. I definitely feel like this is going to be another touchdown here. So we'll Debochi in motion but oh, they'll hand it to Williams flag down and Williams is down but like there was some contact between Debochi and maybe one of those unicorn defenders yeah I feel like it's just a physical game I feel like the physicalness that got to Arthur there and it was just unfortunate with the flag we'll hear from our referee Joel Pearson block in the back Offence number one, 10 yard penalty, replay second down. So Debochi, Arthur Debochi does get called in the block on the back. It's away from the main action, wasn't it? But, uh, you know, if it's illegal, it's illegal. So <laughs> NFL Academy gets marched back, second and 20 now. Yeah, if it's on the field, the rest definitely can see it. And that's just unfortunate there. Troni says something to Williams you can see the pressure coming they're trying to send a blitz they do send men and Troni will Ooh. go incomplete That's trying to get that one to Akanadi I feel like he just uh, he felt the pressure there it was unfortunate he just needed that extra second to get the ball off on that 10 yard out but unfortunately Moose just couldn't end up picking it off so it's going to be third and long for the academy do you try and get it all in one go at this point? I mean, at this place in the field, Sam, is it? Do you try and you know, go for something short? Called by the defence. Yeah, I feel like definitely. Their first of the half at 2 minutes 30 seconds. 2 minutes 30 seconds left. Sorry, Sam, go ahead. Yeah, I feel like definitely in the head of Jack, I feel like you've definitely got two plays here now, the third and fourth down to try get in the end zone. And I feel like it's definitely doable. It's definitely manageable. I've seen this, seen this done before, and I reckon they should be able to get in here. So the NFL Academy is still pushing hard as we come to the close very soon to this first half. So so grateful that you're all joining us. And we know that you'll be joining us from all over the world. So many players, 16 different international, uh, you know, players from 16 different nations and um, places around the world on this team. We'll see if we can bring you some of those um, heritage places that they come from. So many different teams that contribute to the NFL Academy. There are links between Schwabisch Hall and the NFL Academy as well in this game. And uh, we'll bring you some of those as uh, the NFL Academy come out of that timeout. Back onto the field. Third and 20 is the challenge. No flag. Troni will roll and go to the end zone. Incomplete. Ooh. Very close to being a reception. Troni again with another beautiful pass. A lot of air under it, but uh, incomplete. Yeah, that was a great ball there. Just checking whether there is a flag. Looks like there is a flag down. They did see some movement on that uh, defensive line. Defense number 99. Five-yard penalty. Replay third down. So there is uh, Kian Sen, who got called from the Unicorns, and that will give... 
Troni and the NFL Academy another shot at this long third down, third and 15. Yeah, definitely keep your eyes here on um, Arthur and Moose outside because I reckon they could take the top off and score a touchdown here. Troni looks to his left under the post, but now we'll go back to the oh, corner. Oh. And that is another score for the NFL Academy. Great play there by Adrian. Great, great, great route running. We had a post outside and it was a nice little rub route on, from Adrian running the wheel route. And it was just able to create separation there from his corner and just able to score a great touchdown. That was hey, a great ball as well. Adrian Maluka with uh, his score on the board, as you say. And uh, it was just a really nice wheel route, wasn't it, into, the, into that corner of the end zone? Yeah, it was definitely great. It was a great route because uh, Moose on the outside was running a post, so it was definitely great because uh, he got confused with his um, corner, so it was definitely great, great to create the separation. Uh, unicorns do a good job on the extra point they block another one blocked a punt today now they block an extra point blocked a couple of extra points have the unicorns as the crowd now gathering as the uh, the rain kind of uh, left us the sun's come out a bigger crowd here at Loughborough we're just stood on the bank with a little bit of elevation overlooking this field but uh, lots of people down here now watching these young men really ball out great to see Sam yeah, it's definitely great to see. It's great to see how the game's growing and people are starting to take notice, notice of these great great teams because if I was them, I'd definitely come down and watch, watch this great game happening. Lots of other action will be coming up over the next few weeks for you to watch uh, here at NFL UK as these uh, NFL Academy guys get their season underway. Talked about the Schwabish Hall connections. Benjamin... Clents played for Schwabish Hall in the last NFL Academy came and now and now he's with the NFL Academy joined in the summer before receiving an offer to and committing to Kennesaw State University which he'll be attending later this year so lots of these guys on the field you know it's a community of young men all trying to get further opportunities to play in the States and to play all over the world and uh, what a great community of young men it is Sam yeah it's definitely great it's great to see how the the NFL is bringing bringing this game to throughout uh, the whole world and it's just great to see how it's growing and impacting so many lives in so many different ways just this Selig himself the NFL Academy running back we've named his uh, named his made his name a number of times also played for Schwabish Hall in this fixture last year so now he's playing against his former teammates and doing a really good job <laughs> yeah Unicorns coming out 39-14 down in this game not much time left now in this second quarter, but Falk will roll to his right and will look to go deep to an open receiver, but that's great tracking from the defensive back. Initially, that receiver looked open, and then it was just great play from the NFL Academy defensive back. Looks like Brandon Bryant back there defending that one. Yeah, it was a great recovery play. I think it was a busting coverage. I mean, it had an open man downfield. I think Finn saw it, but it was just unfortunate to not put enough on it. But it was a great recovery by Brandon there. Falk. Eyes downfield this time and nothing happening on that one. Yeah, I don't know what you've seen there. I think it was a bit of miscommunication or a bit. he felt a bit of pressure and had to rush the throw, but there was no one there. But Trying to get the ball to Kem Kavici, but uh, as you say, Sam, well short. Third and ten. Falk just trying to pull the NFL Academy offside on this one. Nice yeah. and disciplined. Yeah, they've done it quite a lot, so I think the NFL Academy have adjusted to it. And uh, Snap yeah. is off. Falk does roll to his right-hand side. He's got players going deep, but we'll have to come short. Some good defending. Wouldn't let the play go deep with those defensive backs. And it was Jeffrey Katara who got his man out of bounds yeah that was a great play by Jeffrey there to be able to see that your quarterback's running running out and coming back down to complete the ball is very good right time two minute warning NFL you have three timeouts two minutes to go in the half two then. minute warning unicorns you have two timeouts yeah definitely if you're the unicorns here you're definitely wanting to try and get a score to see if see if you can make this game closer in the second half it's 
fourth and eight now for the Unicorns. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to get anything on this, but uh, on that drive. But two minutes can be, as you say, Sam, an age, and they, they will want to try and get the ball back if they can. But they're going to punt this one away. Again, Debochi back, Selig, uh, Ben Lax back rather, and Debochi back to field the punt. Snap is a better snap this time. It's a high kick. And Lax will track back, makes a great catch over his shoulder. Got Debochi in front of him now as a lead block. Look at Lax down the sideline. Oh, Debochi put a little block in as well. They do get him out of bounds. Big number 71 for the Unicorns. Manages to get Lax out of bounds, but another blistering return on the punt. As I say, Ben Lax is a great, great player. To be able to feel that catch coming over your shoulder, coming back to that, to catch it like a fade is pretty pretty special and to be able to after that attack it down the sideline with Arthur coming in front of you is very cool very cool to see him hope, hope he scored there but he was great to make a good great yardage on that and we saw them running I mean they're quite close to us here on the sideline the size of these they're not small either are they? <laughs> yeah. I mean they're, they're big guys running down with great speed and so tough to get them out of bounds the Unicorns managed to do it but Troni will set back back into Unicorn territory for this drive Oh, that Ooh. very nearly was caught by Arthur Debochi. We've got a new quarterback in now, I believe, for the NFL Academy. And indeed, it is Warren oh, yeah. Congolo who's come in for the NFL Academy. And yep. he tries to make his name felt straight away with a strike to Debochi. Took a good hit in the pocket as well there. Took it well, did Congolo? Yeah, definitely. Warren did, Warren did well there. He, was de he got the ball out. I think it was just a bit, bit of um, late, late head movement coming back from Arthur there. But that was definitely a touchdown. It was definitely great to see him play. Second and ten for Congolo now and the NFL Academy. Yeah, if I was Warren here, I just want to get a par quick pass off to get in the game and make sure I'm settled. Looks to his right. We'll go deep again and Ooh. out of bounds. So twice he tries to go to the danger man, Debochi. Yeah, I Two feel like incompletions. Warren's definitely got his... Um, number one receiver here and he's definitely trying to make the unicorns pay but unfortunately it's not paid off so far but we'll see what happens on third down two incompletions for Congolo third down we'll go to the air again nothing doing so it goes to his right hand side and just floats that one out of bounds so three passes three incompletions but uh, keeping that ball safe Sam yeah I definitely feel like coming off the bench coming off cold he definitely just wants to warm up that arm a bit and make sure he's ready to make some plays because I reckon this, this guy's got an arm and I reckon he'll be able to show it later on in this game And he did well there to escape the pressure and get out of bounds. He made the sensible read. Staying on the field at the NFL Academy. So they're going to try and draw the Unicorns offside. But flag has gone down and it's going to go against the NFL Academy, actually. So the Unicorns stay nice and disciplined. False start. Offense yeah, number Academy 69. Here, yeah, it's penalty. Still fourth down. Yeah, if I was the academy here, I'd definitely want to make a big play and make a statement play here for Warren because it would be a great thing for him to do. Still on the field then? Yeah, it shows how powerful this offense is, that they're willing to stay on the field and try and make plays. Motion. Receivers go to the other side and it's a beautiful catch going up high to make the reception. And that's still <laughs> fighting his way. That is great play. It's just his C-League again. Sorry, it's not. It's Isa Fuller on that one. Number 25, it's 26, the NFL Academy. Uh, Let's get a confirmation of the number on that. 26. Well, it's either Fuller or Selig. One of those guys <laughs> made a great play. It was a great play there. Great way to, uh, on fourth down, set up the screen and make a big, big chug play. And that Ooh. going to the corner of the end zone. Great catch. Fantastic reception. That was a great catch there by Moose. It was, well, Warren saw it straight away. It's a single man coverage, press corner. He knew immediately, go to Moose with the length, length of his um, like body and stuff. As a receiver, you just got to put it up there and he'll come down with it for sure. And that was a great play right there. 
Matthew Akinardi with his second touchdown on the board. He opened the account at the NFL Academy at the beginning of this half and he's closing the account at the end of this half with, the, with his second touchdown. Yeah, he's definitely showing what he can do and it's a great, great thing to see. NFL Academy pulled to 45 points now on the board against Schwabish Hall's 14. Andy Quinn with the kick and it's good so that two minute drill worked excellently for the NFL Academy nice and professional down the field they get Congolo in and he just makes uh, some great plays doesn't he I mean it, it, he had that initial three incompletions then hands the balls off gets a big run and then the touchdown to, to Akinardi yeah it was a great thing for him to come in and score a touchdown straight away that's definitely a confidence booster for him and now that he's settled in the game I just want to see what he can do now he can make some more plays make some big plays downfield, make some highlight plays, and we can see what he can do, see if he can pick apart this defence like I know he can and uh, make some big plays. Head coach Steve Hagan just uh, huddled together the kickoff team for the NFL Academy. So they get ready, whether we'll see an onside kick here or some kind of trickery to get the ball back. It's all an opportunity for these NFL Academy guys to practice all the things they've got in the playbook. Definitely for sure. Like To, to practice all this stuff is great. I and mean, They practice it every day in in practice so we'll see what happens well Quinn will just kick it all the way to the end zone no chance for return on that one <laughs> yeah he's got a great leg there and just uh, set him up with no no mishaps or anything that's a great thing to do obviously launched in September 2019 this NFL Academy you know creates life changing opportunities really doesn't it Sam as it did for you for student athletes age 16 to 19 yeah, it's definitely a great thing. It's a great initiative by the NFL here. And it's definitely just, it's proven what it can do. Like, it's got so many guys out to the States. So many guys have changed their lives because of this. And it's just great to see what this uh, academy can do in the future. 53 student athletes from 16 different countries and territories on this squad at the moment. And uh, as we get to the closing seconds of this uh, first half. Time out. Called by the defence. Their first of the half at 52 seconds, 5-2. So 52 seconds left. And since its inception, you know, Sam, there's been more than 40 students that have secured college football scholarships in the US. And there's 30 NFL Academy alumni playing in the NCAA right now. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely great to see. Great to see, like, all the players come up through the academy, grow as players, grow as, like, grow as um, athletes and just... Uh, prove that uh, we can do it the same as Americans it's great to see of course it's not just the NCAA that these athletes have their sights on ultimately they want to get to the NFL right I for mean, sure it'll be interesting think. to see over the next few years how that goes as Falk goes to the flat on a quick out and he'll make a reception that's a great way to start off this drive great way to get out of bounds don't take too much time off the clock and move the chain not move the chains but get close to the change so We'll see what they can do in this course uh, with the winder down of the clock. So difficult to get to the NFL, all that competition, Sam. Are you hopeful that, you know, with the, with the NFL Academy filling that pipeline, we'll soon start seeing those NFL Academy athletes in NFL teams? No doubt for sure. I reckon a couple of guys to watch out for are definitely like players like Darren Agu and Sadie Traore because they are definitely guys who I definitely think will be making appearances on one of the 32 NFL teams. You heard it here first, folks, from Sam. It will be great to see as a yard gained on that one for the Unicorns. Uh, but if you're not experienced in American football and you are a young person watching this and you do want to come down, you know, the, the, it's really open to athletes that are willing to put the commitment in, make the effort and learn the game. You know, you don't have to be from an American football background. In fact, some of these athletes aren't and they come in and they, they learn the game and they, they use those athletic skills to really convert to football, don't they, Sam? For sure, yeah. you just got to be committed committed to be committed to be, uh, be a sponge and like learn the game because no one's perfect and we're just trying to get on the same level even or even higher than the Americans and just prove that we're better than them not better but like prove that we can um, play on the same stage as them lots of players I mean just running down the list here the recent college commitments just signings that the NFL Academy have had of Clinton Azubuiki he goes to Northern Arizona Benjamin Kientz went to Kennesaw State University, you mentioned him early. Timmy Oki, 
who was interviewed on the sideline at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. He won a scholarship to North Western and so many more. We'll come back to some of those names as this uh, game progresses. Falk now still in the game and he gets hit as this ball goes way up into the air and will be intercepted. So that's a great pick, but it was the, really the pressure of the NFL Academy defensive line yeah, the pressure that enabled from Kevin that there. pick to take place. Yeah, the, go ahead. The sir. pressure from Kevin there was definitely crazy. Like To get off his block that quickly and get to the quarterback and disrupt his throwing motion was definitely a phenomenal thing to do. Tanga Kaliata on the interception, but there is a flag a down. Foul, bluffing the passer. Defence number 51. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, they call a rough in the pass a penalty. I well, didn't see anything wrong with that, but he what do I know? Good. Matty Kruger gets called for the rough in the passer. So the Unicorns, instead of an interception, will get a, a fresh set of downs. They're moving down the field with 23 seconds left on the clock, so let's see what they can do here. First and ten. Unicorns will go down the sideline. Oh, and there will be a flag going in there. There was definitely some holding from the defensive back and uh, I believe it was a defensive back that made the interception that wasn't it was Bitanga Kaliata yeah that's just unfortunate there to have the hold it's pretty costly because they'll be able to move the chains if it happens but we just have to see what happens hopefully they can hold out to the end of the half defense number 27 15 yard penalty automatic first down so they actually call it on Camriel Orgill who gets the penalty against him so that'll move the change not a spot foul in the NCAA it's a 15 yarder but it will give the Unicorns some great field position Sam's fan spotting him up <laughs> here in the commentary position yeah. Falk going deep to the corner Ooh. and that's some great pass defending that time gets his hand right into the basket and knocks it away Sam yeah 33 definitely made a big play there it was great to see because uh, Finn there put, put a really good ball in and that should have been caught but that was just a great play on defence to disrupt the catch Sunday Samuel number 33 for the NFL Academy making a play on that one second and ten you can see where Falk's trying to go Hasn't yeah. been able to get over the top of this NFL Academy so far. This time he'll look to his left-hand side again, trying to lift Ooh. the lid, but he cannot get behind the defensive back play again. So trying to go deep, but those defensive backs with the speed to stay with these receivers. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that all that work in the off-season of speed training and getting in the gym has definitely paid off because there was no separation there and be, they were able to keep up with them. Timeout for the unicorns again time as they out. try and called by the offense their third and final timeout at four seconds four seconds left so they're going to have to just you know one shot <laughs> to yeah. really get it in and then the clock's going to expire yeah i think everyone knows where the unicorns are trying to head in that this one play i think it's going to try go deep so if i was the defense here i'd definitely have a couple safeties drop back a bit and uh just protect that end zone because that's the last thing you want a score in the last minute to uh, try to shift this momentum back into the Unicorns' favour in the second half. Definitely thrown to that sideline as well, trying to keep the ball away from Debochi, aren't they? Because he, he's such a weapon in the middle of that uh, defence. For sure, yeah. You don't want to hear him because he's going to come down with it every time because he is a player. He is definitely one to watch. Def uh, offence now lined up at the Academy 30-yard line with third down. Falk takes the snap, flag down, whistles blow. So you would imagine false start on the offense. Fight to the snap, false start, offense number 13. Five yard penalty, replay first down. The clock operator, please restart the clock to four seconds. Four seconds still left on the clock was Ishmael Schmidt trying to get off the line, the receiver, number 13, for the Unicorn, trying to get off the line quick, get a jump on these NFL Academy defensive backs, but it will result in third and 
15, but really they need to throw to the end zone. Yeah, I think everyone knows here they're not going for the first down, they're going for the end zone. So we'll see what happens. Snap. Falk will try and get it over the top. Debochi is there. We called his name before. He's right there yeah. to knock it down. Comes over from his safety position in the middle of the field. He tracked that all the way, didn't he? Yeah, wherever the ball is, Arthur is there as well because he is just a ball hawk. I think he could have come down with that ball, but unfortunately he just batted it away. Just played it safe. So, what an exciting half that's been and it's had lots of action hasn't it from the interceptions that we saw earlier on to Bochy's kick return we've had interceptions from Jan Martin from the Unicorns as well as we get to this half time but uh, it's 46 to the NFL Academy and 14 to the Schwabish Hall Unicorns so we're going to take a little break and we will come back well we'll show you some highlights first let's show you some highlights before we yeah. Before we go on that break, because it did have everything this game. We've seen some great kick returns as well. This is the opening score. And it was uh, Matthew Akanadi that goes in under the posts. Jack Troney getting his uh, eye in early for the score. And that put the NFL Academy up after some great kick returns as well wasn't there here's the second touchdown this time and this is arthur debochi on the punt return picks it up all the way to the corner and says thank you very much arthur debochi such an athlete we've seen him so many times haven't we yeah as i said he's definitely definitely the guy to watch because he is just such a phenomenal phenomenal player and it wasn't just wasn't just um the uh, offense that were making plays and Debochi on the on the pump returns and stuff. It was the defense making plays as well, and uh, you can see here Falk trying to get something going. And uh, this was a uh, tipped and picked, and Debochi with a spectacular interception. He's always there. He's always wanting that ball. He's just hungry for it. But the Unicorns also showed that they can make plays on defense. And this was a rare mistake from Troni as he went to his left-hand side, slightly under through it, and that was picked off by Jan Martin of the Unicorns. Tried to get, tried to get into the end zone, and the, but the Unicorns did get in. Striker with a three-yard touchdown catch to the corner, which was uh, a great job by him. And the NFL Academy came straight back. The running this time of Eustace Selig with a 15-yard run up the middle. Um, but they also got defense involved. This was a forced fumble. A great hit. Ball comes out. That's and a great hard tackle there. And the defense from the NFL Academy really making some hits, as you say. This set themselves up for a Ben Lax touchdown. Troney, with all the time in the world, finds Ben Lax in the corner of the end zone. A great play there. Great play. Ben Lack celebrating, as those NFL Academy do's, but this was a fantastic touchdown from the Unicorns. It was Ishmael Schmidt who ran that slant and then just turned on the after jets to get in. For sure, yeah, he definitely definitely put the afterburners on and he shot that defence with how fast he was going. Yeah, we saw a kick return that went all the way to the end zone, but it was actually called back on a penalty, but we wanted to show you the speed of Justice Selig as he carves his way down the field and just outruns everybody does the five foot six German who played for Schwabish Hall in the last game for them this time comes in and uh, we wanted to show you that highlight as he uh, celebrates in the end zone now it was called back due to a flag but the NFL Academy didn't really matter as a few plays later it was Troney that hit Seb Harris under the posts for his first touchdown of the game. That was a great way he could just uh, go through his reads and get a touchdown there. Uh, it was a great play. And then the NFL Academy comes straight back with another touchdown. This one over the top to Adrian Malaka in the end zone. They weren't done yet. The NFL Academy really putting on a show. Matthew Akanadi or Moose, as you call him, yeah. in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. So those are your highlights. It's been a fantastic half of football. Really looking forward to what the second half will bring. We'll take a quick break, but we'll join you very soon for the second half, and we'll see you then.
Can't wait to announce to the world where I'll be going to. Temple University. Temple University. Northwestern University. Oh, yeah. University of Tennessee. You come to the NFL Academy for a reason. This is the UK-based player development program for student athletes. It's like football Hogwarts. It's incredible. You want to be here to play the best, become the best, and realize your future. There's only one NFL Academy in the world, and you want to be in the best position go play college ball in the U.S. This is the place. Students have been here and done it. And they're living that dream. Our academy is built on the strength of the NFL shield. Every star on that shield represents excellence, integrity, preparation, and yes, performance at the highest level. When you wear the shield, you're standing on the shoulders of the men and women who have made this game great. Coach Hagan, he represents that. He's been at the best. Cleveland Brown, the New York Jets, Notre Dame, and the University of North Carolina. He is here to win. We need to see who's smart, who's fast, who can do this fundamentally well, who will do whatever it takes to win and leave no doubt. And when we find those players, we'll have success. This is the place where you can represent your family, your town, your country at the highest level. It ain't easy, and it's not for everyone. But if you're willing to commit, we will turn you into a winner. Who got it better than us? Nobody. We ain't nobody got it better than us. Let's get set, let's get set. Bro. Jack Crony, quarterback for the NFL Academy. Welcome to our field. Go, let's play fast, let's go. Five, two, three. One, two, three. Up it! Man, this is cold today. Let's go, man. Let's bring the energy in today. Let's compete. Let's go. Hey, Academy Jack's ready! Academy Jack's ready. Let's go. Hey, bro. What happened on Yankee? Was it was it a little too deep? My bad. Right, go. Go. Good catch, bro. Bro, am I not six foot? He's six exactly, foot. bro. But six baddie. foot. Oh, yeah. Six foot. Between Shut up, bro. Red, red, set. That's good. Perfect. Had good pace on it. Hey, come in, come in, come in. Bro, you gotta check it first. Bro. Samuel, you don't you don't need to snap it so hard, right? Just get it back there. Touchdown. Who got it better than us? Nobody. That's right. Let's go. I got it. Bro. I got it. No, I got it.
Welcome back to the University of Loughborough and welcome back to the second half of this game between Schwabish Hall and the NFL Academy and we just want to apologise for we've had some technical difficulties here which meant that you've missed a little bit of that first half, uh, a little bit of that second half rather. Um, Schwabish Hall had an excellent start to the second half and actually drive down the field and Ishmael Schmidt took a touchdown in and what you're watching on screen now is third and six with the NFL Academy trying to return that score, return the favour back to uh, the Unicorns. And it was the scores 46-21 currently as the NFL Academy trying to get to the back of the end zone. And that was not able to be a completion. I'm still here with Sam Fenton. How are you doing, Sam? Yes, I'm doing all good. Uh, it's great to be back in the second half now. It's, we started off this second half with a great, great set of plays and... Now the academy are in the red zone again, and it looks they're looking threatening. Yeah, the unicorns came out and uh, took that opening kickoff, drove it down the field, and it was Ishmael Schmidt that uh, scored um, for their opening drive of this second half, converted the extra point, um, and then the NFL Academy came straight back through the running of uh, Siegel on the uh, kick return, put themselves in great field position, and that's where you pick up the action, as you can see the NFL Academy formation. back on the field. On the offense. Yes, yeah, definitely a great, declined, great start to the second half. Of the play is fourth down. So there was an illegal formation on that, Sam, which drives the NFL Academy uh, back. But they'll be now fourth down on the 20-yard line. They'll be wanting to convert here, so they watch for short routes near the near the first down marker. Fourth down with some motion. Arthur Debochi, the single receiver to the top as Lax goes in motion to the trip side. Congolo will oh. try and get Debochi over the top. Touchdown, NFL Academy. Debochi just beats his man. 20-yard touchdown on fourth down. Yeah, that's a great touchdown right there. The way the NFL Academy were, were able to motion Ben Lax away from the Arthur, Arthur to leave a one-on-one -on -one matchup right there. was It was a great thing to do. And then Arthur just to burn the guy over the top and Warren to put it in the bucket. It was a great. A way to answer it back. You see her here on the replay. Watch the top of your screen. Debochi just takes a little step inside. Defensive back bites a little and Debochi over the top for the touchdown. Perfectly thrown ball from Congolo as like Andy Quinn comes back on the field yeah. for the extra point. High snap. Kick is down. Kick is good. What did you make of that touchdown, Sam? Yeah, I definitely feel like Warren's come out more comfortable, more more composed, and he's definitely throwing the ball a lot better, and it is shown here. It's shown here for a touchdown, and I feel like there's going to be great things to come. NFL Academy hit 53 points on their first drive of the second half. This offense really is putting up a lot of points. I mean, there was a touchdown on a kick return that was called back. We've had one touchdown from def from the defence as well. But uh, this NFL Academy really can put up points quick. For sure. And I feel like it's shown here. And I feel like this could be it could be a high-scoring game. And it could be a high-scoring half, really. If, we, if they keep the gas on right now and keep on pushing to get points, it could be, could be a pretty big um, points difference. So only at the beginning of the second half, we've already got two scores on the board, one from both teams. They take, both take their opening drives down the field and score. So these offense was putting on a show. Yeah, well, they had 84, what, 74 points already in this game. <laughs> That's a crazy, crazy number for uh, just the start of the second half. Quinn will drive it out of the end zone and the Unicorns, Schwabish Hall will come back onto the field. And their offense is playing a lot better. Schmidt now they had his second score uh, for the uh, Schwabish Hall Unicorns. But they've also been getting their running backs and some other receivers into the game as well as they come back out. Will they still be looking to, you know, get back into this one, Sam? Or is it just playing for pride at this point? No, I feel like definitely the way they've been playing, the way they started the second half was definitely great. And if they can keep this up, it could be a close game because... They were, they were picking apart that defense on that first drive. Neo Thust in the backfield with Falk, and he will take the ball, makes a good effort, drags a, an NFL Academy player four yards. 
for some uh, good for a good start to that drive. It was Nana Agman who was hanging off the back of him. Yeah, that was a great, great way to run to the ball and get a tackle from Nana there. Second and six. Tight trips formation. Hand off again, and it's same runner and the same result. Nangmar this time does get his man down before he's able to drag him anywhere. So Nilo Thirst, no joy on that one. Yeah, I feel like the way the unicorns tried to try to contain the box there was uh, I feel I feel like they just made all the NFL Academy players just swarm to the ball even quicker, and I don't think that should have been done, but it is what it is. Third and six. Signal comes in. Fault with four targets out there. Looks to the bottom of the screen. Complete. Ugh, some good hitting going in again. He's just going to be short of that fourth down. Takes him a minute just to just to uh, check he's all right. Does Matthias Vogel, but he is on his feet. But it brings up fourth and short. Now, do is it too early? Do you think Sam to go for it here? Yeah, I think it's a bit too early, especially with the field position they're at right now. I don't think it's sensible to go for it. So I think they're doing the right decision here to punt. They are. Again, it's Lax and Debochi back. Debochi already on the board in this second half, playing offense, defense and special teams. Arthur Debochi, the man that can do it all at the moment. <laughs> he is a superstar and I feel like there could be uh, another key play here. They will kick to Debochi's side, but it will take a schwabish hall. Well, it takes an NFL Academy bounce and just comes to rest right at the halfway line, which is where the NFL Academy will take over with some good field position. Couldn't get anything going on that one, the Unicorns. Yeah. I don't know if you feel like Warren here has got a, got a set of drive together and uh, throw some passes and do a complete drive and score a touchdown here because that's what they need to do. Warren Congolo, the first, first time we've seen him here on the live streams, but uh, he's been playing well so far. Yeah, definitely. I feel like he's definitely more composed now, settled into the game and great things to come. And he's won that backup job to Troni at the NFL Academy. So uh, he's learning as Troni learnt from you, Sam. <laughs> now Warren's learning from Jack. And, uh, you know, so it goes on as the knowledge is passed down. Yeah, I definitely think it's a great thing to see this, the way the progression of quarterbacks and stuff. But you can see he's making plays. Quick into the flat, Congolo, and again, the quick feet of Seelig, we think. It's difficult to see the numbers sometimes. I think it's Adrian. From our advantage. Adrian, we lock. Running back. Yeah, Adrian Malaka, number 22. There's a great run there. Great way to shed a tackle and get a first down. Flag down though, and it looks like the academy will be coming back on what's probably a hold. Let's hear from referee Joel Pearson. Offense number 14, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. So they call it on Matthew Akinardi, who's already got a couple of scores of his own on the board, but gets caught on that one. Congolo takes a snap, first and long pitch out. Nice defensive play. That's great play from that defender. Strong who is Manuel there. Binda in the backfield. No gain. Strong tackle there. The way to read the play really quickly and make a decisive decision to make it make, go down and shoot for that tackle is a great, great play. Second and long for the NFL Academy. Congolo to the flat and immediate tackle again. Some great defense now coming in. That was Manuel Binder makes two back-to-back -back <laughs> tackles for a loss. He is on fire. That was a great tackle. Great way to shed his block because there was an academy guy trying to set up a screen there, but he just was able to dip around him and just get to the man straight away. And that was a great, great tackle. 
fires up a team, doesn't it, when a defender just decides to take over the game like that. Back-to-back -back hits from Binder yeah, definitely on these that. receivers in the flats as the whistles blow. Timeout. It's third and 20. Their first of the half. Third and 23. 20. Left to go um, in this uh, for this down to get a conversion here. What do you do here, Sam, as a quarterback? Is it worth taking a shot? Or are you just looking to minimise the damage of this drive and get off the field? Uh, definitely. The way the way the score is right now, I feel like you're just trying to minimise the damage, not trying to do nothing too special. But at the same time, you're trying to you're trying to get points and show what you can do on the field. So you want to go for it. So I feel like the sensible option is just to see what the defense is doing and read it off them, because they could be playing a coverage where, like you ha you you could be scheming up to that and make a big play. Shout out to the the you know the number of African players now on this NFL Academy team that come from Nigeria and Senegal and. The work of OCU Manure and others that have done that to recruit those players into the NFL Academy and they're really beginning to show their athletic ability and prowess. I'll come back to you, Sam, on that as we get to this third down. Congolo fakes it to one side, then goes to the other with a blocker out in front. And that's a good tackle. Now, um, I think it's uh, Adrian that does pick up 12 yards or so, but he's not going to have enough of the first down. So a nice saving tackle. That's a great great way to minimize the minimize the risk and uh give more more of a chance for andy to pin it down in the 10 yard in the 10 yards of their red red zone so malacca can't convert but back to where the drive started at that midway point and the nfl academy will bring out andy quinn to punt single receiver back that's constantine stricker back for the unicorns flag NFL Academy think that they've caught the unicorns offside it was hard to tell from here but well start offense multiple players five yard penalty still fourth down <laughs> but they haven't it's the end all of the NFL Academy offensive line moves back they go won't hurt Quinn's chances on the punt too much to be fair it probably helps out Quinn because it gives him a more more room to smack that ball down there and not get into the end zone. Snap is good, ball is up and it will bounce at the 10 and take a unicorn bounce and uh, it will be just a sea leg that will down the ball at the 23 so out come, sorry at the 16 so out will come the unicorns to start this drive yeah those african players just having a look benson jerry coming from benu clinton uzabiki coming from emo sunday samuel from kaduna uh ewald thompson um claude coming from worry and the the up uh, the, the work of the uprise foundation in bringing those players over to the nfl academy amazing yeah it's definitely a great thing great thing to see and just showing what they've been able to do with people like Emmanuel and stuff like that to go to Tennessee it was a great thing to see yeah winning those NCAA scholarships as well as we get back to the live action here the Unicorns will hand this one up left hand side and great interior work from that NFL Academy line Joel on the tackle there I think Yeah, good work from the interior. So half a yard gained maybe on that. Yeah. The yards have been tough to come by running up the middle against this big defensive line of the NFL Academy. Every year those athletes get slightly bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Snap, pass, catch. Oof. And that's Strickland again who gets swung down. Defensive lineman. We've called his name a number of times Matty Kruger. today. I think it was uh, Elunye on the uh, Nana Agmang, rather, number 68 defensive lineman. And then Matty Kruger coming in, as you say, to clear up. Third and six. Yeah, they're definitely playing physical here. They want the ball. They're hungry for it. So let's see what they can do here. 
Academy threatening blitz. One stays, one goes. Ball to the sideline. Immediate takedown again. So those defensive backs quick to rally they on the ball. <laughs> they do swarm, don't they, Sam? Yeah. Kingsley Aki on the tackle there. Fourth and short. Again, the NFL Academy come up and just hold them short. It's been a couple of drives now where they've got them sort of fourth and one, fourth and two, but the field position hasn't been good enough for the Unicorns to go for it. NFL defense coming up with plays when they need to. Yeah, definitely. I feel like with the clock winding down now, I feel like at some point they've got to go for it. Still in Q3, but as you say, a long way to go if they're going to mount any kind of comeback in this game. For sure. If a comeback starts, it's got to, it's got to start around now if they've got any time to get back. punt the boat she's under it and it makes a nice reception and goes his right hand side high kicks out of the tackle down the sideline will they get him out of bounds Ooh. no they won't it's another <laughs> touchdown for arthur debochi and have we not seen enough of this player he's got now his third <laughs> touchdown on the board arthur debochi unbelievable stuff today that is a crazy crazy touchdown the way he could just see the vision there get down the sideline, shed some tackles and get to the end zone. That's, that's a player that can make a, make a lot of plays. He, he is a superstar and we'll definitely see more of him this game. So calm, isn't he, in taking that punt. I mean, there were players around him. It was a high kick. It was a decent kick. He just takes it in his stride at speed and he's just down that sideline, blistering pace again. For sure, yeah. He was playing with no fear there. He was just had all the composure in the world. He's playing world class. Competed in that destroying one-on-one -on -one event at the Pro Bowl, did Arthur Debochi. So he really has just gone from strength to strength after we saw him at that uh, Tottenham Hotspur game. He had a great season last season. Just come back even stronger as Andy Quinn on for the extra point. And he will convert. And the NFL Academy extend their lead to 60-21. to 21. Coming into a season, Sam, you know, when you... Let's look, actually, at the uh, replay of Arthur Debochi's touchdown. You can see the kick's nice and high, so it gives the opportunity for the kick coverage to get into position. And then Debochi, Sam. He's just, yeah. The way he's able to see that vision, go down the sideline and turn on the jets there just to get into the end zone is just phenomenal phenomenal and that's an offensive lineman number 71 tried to get him out of bounds and just the strength of debochi just to fight off the tackle and just keep keep his momentum into the end zone yeah i feel like it's all props to the the, the stuff he does in the weight room because i feel like he he's one of those guys that's always in the weight room 24 7 just working to get better and stronger so arthur debochi with back-to-back -back touchdowns for the nfl academy as Quinn is getting plenty of kickoff duty today. Ooh. Kicks it out the back of the end zone again. No chance for a return. Unicorns back again at the 20-yard line trying to mount another drive. And they did come out and show some life at the beginning of that second half. And they want to do that again. Still in Q3. But you feel like it's really getting away from them. Yeah, for sure. I feel like they've just got to play their football. And I feel like that first drive, they were doing an excellent job of throwing the ball, finding separation and delivering and executing really good plays so I feel like they've just got to go back to that and then let's see what they can do and start moving down the field and start building and drive that's what you, that's what's key here what's the attitude of these teams you know the NFL Academy over the last few years really dominant in Europe we're having to play American teams really to get that competition now but what's the attitude of the teams and I'll come to you after this play when they do come over to play the NFL Academy I'll come back to you in a second on that as we go first down Falk will hand this one and again met immediately at the line of scrimmage. 59 there, made an excellent tackle. And that is Luke Francis, the defensive lineman for the NFL Academy. Yeah, as a flag goes in. The players coming over from Dusseldorf or they come over for, you know, like um, Schwabish Hall today. What's the attitude of them coming into a game like this? I feel like they're, from their perspective, they they want to knock off the Kings. Like, we are the Kings of There's Europe. No I feel like Face we mask. still... Number two... Defence, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. 
yeah, as I was saying, I feel like we're the kings of re Europe and I feel like they, they're wanting to knock us off that pedestal and th like every year they come better and better and I feel like it's just coming a better and better rivalry and it just for the future of the game, it's just growing. It does and, and it's like, a, you know, the, playing these, this NFL academy just raises your game, doesn't it? Because you have as athletes to come in and compete. Shrabish Hall got the penalty against the NFL academy and that's a well-designed play as they get a little wide receiver screen going. Number 81 with the reception that time for Schwabish Hall. Julian Neal makes the reception and gets close to first down, second and two. That was a great way to just leak out the backfield, left uncovered, and it was a great way to make some yards. Falk and Schwabish Hall still fighting, still got their heads up. Still making plays, hand off this time up the middle and again crunching into that defensive line. First man there was Meshash Arthur, who we've called already a great athlete, makes the tackle. Yeah, Mesh is a phenomenal player. He's just come back from... Yeah, Mesh is a phenomenal player. He's just come back from the, was it the Nike? Nike uh, a camp in uh, Las Vegas and he, he was balling out there and he's come back and he's it's shown because he's a phenomenal player. Yeah, competed in the Nike Next Ones event in the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. Competed against high schools from every NFL team, home city, with the NFL Academy in the UK being the, the 33rd team that was invited to go there and, and play. And Mashash did us a, did the team proud yeah. in terms of representing himself and the team. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely filling the boots of um, the old captain Henry Lies there, like holding it down in the linebacker sector. So I feel like someone needs to step up after he's gone, after the team captain's gone, and I feel like he's doing a great job of that. So that brings us to the end of the third quarter. We're into the Q4 now with the score in the NFL Academy 60, Shrabishall 21, as they do a quick swap at halfway line, and the first play of Q4 will be a play-action pass. Falk looking for his receiver down the middle. Dangerous throw. There were three NFL Academy players around. Ball gets tipped. NFL Academy are claiming they got the interception. But uh, the whistle did blow it dead. Trying to get the ball that time to Ishmael Schmidt, the touchdown scorer. They're discussing this now, and it might be that the NFL Academy have got the ball. They're certainly acting as if they do. <laughs> Here's a replay. Falk wants to get something going in this last quarter of play. Throws the ball. You can see all the jerseys around. It's tipped up initially. That's a great tip, Gerald. There. And if it was received by the NFL Academy, then it was right off the shoestrings. And Great it play is there, the NFL Academy offense that are coming out onto the field. So no return on the interception. But a great athletic play by this uh, NFL Academy defensive unit again. So first drive for Q4 for the NFL Academy off the interception. handoff gain a couple of yards yeah definitely hard running there hard running there by Adrian and he's he'll, he'll break out at one point and he'll go for a big run Adrian Malakia still in the backfield Congolo there with him. This time he'll go to the flat and Congolo will hit him in the flat. 28 that time. Yeah, 11 there was just unfortunate enough not to get the block because if he got the block there, Adrian was off to the off the races and gonna, was going to go score. But unfortunately, he just got let through and had to, had a free hit on Adrian there. So a nice play by the defenders of the uh, Schwabish Hall Unicorn team that time. Tackle for a loss, third and 12. Congolo 
looks over the middle of the field this time oh. wide open receiver and breaks a tackle that is Ben Lax down the field we've said his name before he's a great great player great ben job with, from Congolo as well to uh, get the ball to him and, and again the NFL Academy going quick so that's the way to turn field position on its head in an instant For sure. quick hitting play yeah, they just went full verts there. Simple play, but effective. And they were able to execute it very well. So from their own 20 down to the Unicorn 20. Congolo looks to his trip side this time. Wants to go over the top. Ooh. And he's just dropped. He had his man and he was open. But couldn't hold on to the ball that time. Unfortunate there. That was a great, great play, great route. It's just unfortunate not to bring it in. Second and ten from the Unicorn 20-yard line. NFL Academy looking for yet more points to build on their 60-21 to 21 score. Checking the play at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they both see stuff. Congolo will try and run it. That's good defensive play. Flag comes in as well. Sometimes uh, when you're trying to pull those quarterbacks down, it can be a face mask or a hold maybe. We'll see what the referees say. Other games coming up. Saturday, March 23rd is the next upcoming NFL Academy fixture. Face mask. Three the defense. Half defense. First down. Yeah, coming up, and then we've got uh, NFL Academy hosting a futures camp and workout in Düsseldorf for, for protective uh, prospective talent. So that, that'll be a fun fun day out for yeah. the guys to to see whether there's other talent in Germany that they can bring over to the academy themselves. For sure, that'd be great because I know a lot of players came from those camps like last year and stuff like that, and. I feel like it's definitely one of the ways to see the talent in Europe. So it was a face mask penalty, which gives the academy great field position. Into the flat goes Ben Lax, and he will take it in for yet another NFL Academy touchdown. Ben Lax, beautiful job by Congolo, just going with the flow of the ball and into the end zone, Sam. Yeah, that was a great play by Warren there. He was able to fake the run there and lead, um, lead Ben on, onto a little onto the flat on the left hand side and he was able to complete the ball and make a great play great play great touchdown clever little play and so difficult to keep track of Lax as he as he kind of you know comes underneath the, the line of scrimmage and you just lose sight of him as a defense clever isn't it yeah for sure because uh, they've run that play a couple times but um, instead Ben Lax um, chips the end so they're probably used to him just chipping the end and like uh, not coming across but this time he leaked out and he was able to score great analysis Sam thanks for that We've got Quinn on for the extra point and he converts another one. So Quinn's been kicking well, so plenty of practice today with the extra yeah. points and the kickoffs and punting. Yeah, he's definitely had a lot of practice. Clearly, his uh, practice makes perfect. Here is that play. You can see Ben Lax, as Sam was saying, just leaks out to the left hand side doesn't chip the end as usual and there he is and there's also some good blocking going on in the edge there for sure yeah it's definitely a great way to seal the end and because they were playing the coverage they were in it just made it so much more sweeter 67 points on the board for the NFL Academy scored 31 points last time out which was your last game wasn't it Sam and so it yeah. scored 67 this time just a keeps getting better every every year doesn't it now under that leadership of Steve Hagan the head coach who came in sort of midway through the season last year and then Lamont Winston coming in as the head of the NFL Academy and they just seem to go from strength to strength yeah for sure this one will be fielded at the goal line out to the 25 or so which is where the unicorns will take over. 
great coaching staff here. What does a day in the life look like for an NFL academy? You, you know, you were here for so many years, Sam, and led the team to so many victories. How, how, what, is, what does a day look like in the life of a student athlete at the NFL Academy? Yeah, it's a long, long day. So for me, it usually consists of starting waking up around 6 a.m.-ish, going to gym, going to gym for half six, and in, in the gym for like an hour and a half, two hours, working, working on my body, progressing myself as a player. And then after that, we just got school because you can't be an athlete without being a student. So we had a school there. We had to go go classes all day. And then we had training and film. And it was a long day. We didn't finish till like 6 p.m. Ball comes out this time and a penalty flag goes down as well. So it was just a muffed snap. And does it take a toll on your body? You know, do you have to keep your, you know, you have to keep an eye on yourself just to make sure that you're pacing yourself and eating the right things. And, you know, there must be a code of conduct that you guys have. Tell us about some of the pressure that it puts on you. Uh, yeah, for sure. You're definitely, you're definitely in that grind, but you know, you've got to do your best to get out to the States and stuff like that. So you have to be the best of yourself every day First to have that chance. We'll and I feel like with Number two of the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So rough in the passer call that time, the Mashash uh, Arthur got called on the rough in the passer, so that will give the Unicorns some uh, field position. Yeah, as, an, as I was saying, I feel like with the people we have around me, with the nutrition and everything, when I was there, it definitely felt like there was nothing to be worried about because they, were, they, all had, they knew what they were doing and had us in good hands. Awesome job, and I know it's the dream of so many young people that may be watching this and uh, be interested in trying out. You certainly can do as the unicorn. So, Falk threw it up into the air. Seemed to just hang, but uh, no interception that time. Yeah, threw the ball dangerously though. over the middle there. I think it was Jason Stonsgrath who was trying to pick that one off, number 12. Another quarterback in for the Unicorns now, and he does get the ball out to his receiver. It's Len Wan Fulinger who's in at quarterback, and he gets the ball to Ishmael Schmidt yeah, he did a for great the reception job. and a first down. He did a great job there, getting the ball out quickly, getting it on time, and just making, letting his receiver make a play and moving down the field. So Fulinger in at quarterback for the Unicorns with two running backs to his right and left and they hand the ball up the right hand side. Only a couple of yards gained. Yeah. Mentoring the younger players in the team, Sam, uh, when Troni comes in and you're in that quarterback room, is there, do you feel like the responsibility to pass on as much skills and knowledge as you can? How does that all work? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like first and first, it's it's a competition. Like in that quarterback room, like you're all competing against yourself because only one can play. But at the same time, you're you're leading for the set, the future as well. So you've got to give them knowledge and stuff, so way they way can lead and everything. And I feel like he he's done a great job this year of just leading this team to a very successful season. Ball batted up into the air that time for the NFL Academy. Couple of times now, this ball's gone into the air and it's been there hanging, waiting for somebody from the NFL Academy to pick it off. But Unicorns get away with another one, third and ten. Right at midfield. Well into Q4 now. Pulling her over the middle. Picked. Mashesh Arthur down the left hand sideline now. He'll go Ooh, down. That's a great play. So the linebacker, Mashesh Arthur, we've called his name a couple of times and, you know, he's been a great player now. I think it's his third year now, is it, for uh, Mashesh? Second year. second year. So great job from him and he will switch that field position again and give the ball back to the NFL Academy. For sure. He kind of like baited the quarterback there. He, uh, he fooled him. He, he was hook dropping, hook dropping and then was able to just quickly snag that ball off and it was a great play. Great way to secure the ball and uh, turn the ball over. More highlights from the NFL Academy. <laughs> and more highlights to share with all those schools that may be watching. 
you know all of you you know joining in on the various streams that we've got out there watching this NFL Academy so many of you parents or grandparents or related or family friends and family from other teams as well as that one's going to go for another touchdown Jason. unbelievable work from Stongarath Jason Stongarath goes all the way to the house 50 yards on that one yeah he's doing the number 12 proud there continuing the legacy and um, <laughs> making plays so first play after the interception from Arthur Jason Stongarath gets on the board yeah it was a great throw by Bobby there as well to be able to quickly get in I know it's his first drive and then um, re quick uh, make a quick play and let it go it's just great yeah, call cool about Bobby Bridges. It doesn't matter who they put back there. That offensive line does a great job. Stomp Garath with the touchdown. He just broke 70 points, Sam. Yeah, it's great to see. Extra point is good. So Ben Lax goes in. Stomp Garath goes in. Here's the replay. Sam, you can see first play Bobby Bridges, and it's just it's a, a little play inside, a couple of broken tackles. Look at that move to the outside, and look at the speed of Stonkarath. Yeah, the just pulling away at the end there. The explosiveness of his um, this is athlete athletic uh, figure is just crazy. He's able to pull away like that and get into the end zone without being untouched is a great thing to see. More games coming up if you've enjoyed this one. We'll be bringing you some more action from the NFL Academy operating out of uh, Loughborough University. Have all these uh, access to these elite training facilities here on site. And, uh, clear pathways to the NCAA and beyond as the Unicorn will try and get something going for themselves. Get the ball out to the 27, which is where they will take over. Getting back to that list of, you know, university players, we talked about some of them before, but Lopez Sanusi, defensive lineman, got that place at Boise State University. Then you got Ella Jeffrey Afuzo, who got to Glenville. And, of course, Daniel Akin Kunmi winning that scholarship to... Yeah, Div 1 massive school, Oklahoma University. Had over 30 offers and he ends up at Oklahoma. Just amazing to see. And uh, what, what's the atmosphere like in terms of, you know, when you, when you hear that one of your teammates has won a scholarship, what, what's it like for the other teammates? Oh, it's, it's the best feeling in the world, knowing your teammates, like, the amount because you know the amount of um, hard work and stuff they put in and see it pay off is just a great thing to see. Luke Yao Gale, who you mentioned at uh, University of Buffalo, and then uh, Papa Abdelay, who got a, a, a university scholarship to Boston College, playing offensive line. So the number of players winning those places continues to grow. This ball is going to go to the sideline and makes a great reception, spins out of the tackle. What a fantastic effort from Patrick Ganks. What a catch. That was in the bucket there. That was a crazy, that was a great, great throw to thread the needle there and put it in the bucket for that receiver to go and get, go up and get a catch is a phenomenal. Spinning out of the tackle, Patrick Ganks. Beautifully lofted pass from Len Wan Fulinger. Here, have a look at it here. Watch the bottom of your screen. Fulinger with a low snap and then lofts the ball up and ganks runs under it now watch this move <laughs> two defenders Double nfl coverage. academy can't get him down spins out of it and makes a great play down the sideline nfl academy have to rally to get get ganks down got an injury now on the sideline just close to the 10 yard line so having to take a little bit of a uh delay in the play here but that's great to see. And, of course, there's so many people watching this stream and they'll get to see the play of Ganks and Follinger and, and others. So when you come and play the NFL Academy, it gives you that opportunity to showcase what you can do as an individual athlete. For sure, yeah. Like, I feel like definitely if you show up against the Academy, no, like, people take charged. notice. Injury um, timeout. The right people take notice. You can go, go a far away.
games coming up for the NFL Academy. If you've enjoyed this one, we're so glad you're, you're with us and you continue to support these young men as they go on their journey. We've got a number of games that will be coming up over the next few weeks. So Saturday, March the 23rd, the Academy's playing Dusseldorf, Panthers under 20 in Dusseldorf. That'll be the third meeting between those two sides as we get back to the action with the Unicorns trying to get something going on the ground. It's Nilo Turst with the run and great play another by Nana. great tackle, yeah, by Nana. Nana's able to shed the shed the block there and then just get to the get to the guy straight away. Nani, Nana Agaman, he's made uh, four tackles today, a number of them behind the line of scrimmage. He's been really active at that defensive tackle position. Falling our second and goal from the nine. Looks to his right and will throw it batted down. Nearly got to his uh, receiver, but it was batted down that Four time. Two by, there, had a great play. Yeah, that defensive back it was uh, Silas Sibanda. He batted it down for the NFL Academy. Third and goal from the nine. Let's see what they can do. Trips to the top, but they'll dump it over the middle. A good crunching tackle on third down. They get a little bit closer, so it was a nice play to Tim Muller. Yeah, it was a great play. Definitely to get get some yardage and get down to the three yard line. Fourth down. Last chance to get in on this drive for the Unicorns. And you can hear Steve Hagen on the sideline saying, offense, get ready, He's trusting his defense to get the Unicorns off the field. Follinger takes the snap, rolls right and tipped Ooh. and incomplete. Good play at both ends. Ball was tipped, but a flag goes in. So, now, was that a pass interference or maybe give the Unicorns another chance to get in? We'll have to see. Look yeah. clean from up here, Sam. Yeah, it look, did look clean, but it's tough to see from because we're so far away. You can't see what's on the other side of the field because the refs have a better view than us. It was great play by the defensive line of the NFL Academy because ball was batted and short, so he couldn't get it to his receiver. Yeah, it was a great way how the defensive line uh, were able to apply pressure to the quarterback, able to rush him. He had to throw it before the receiver is ready to receive the ball. And unfortunately, uh, that's what happens. It comes in an incomplete pass. There is no foul for pass interference as the ball was tipped at the line. So An they, incomplete pass and a turnover on downs. There you go. Ball was tipped at the line, so there couldn't have been a pass interference penalty. So they picked the flag up, Sam. And that means that the offense will take over. Well, let's wait and see. Uh, we think that was fourth down. They're just changing the box now. Pretty sure that was a fourth down play, yeah. and as a result, the academy should be getting the ball back. But we're just, uh, the referee's just checking the box. Yeah, I think there's a bit of confusion there, but I think it should get sorted out. Head referee today, Joel Pearson, working with Mark Ward, Richard Whitby, Paul Todd, Michael Helvist. David Black and Stuart Andrew on the clock here at the University of Loughborough. Thanks to Bafra for providing the crew and they get the call right. So the NFL Academy coming back onto the field after that fourth down turnover on downs. So that big play, that individual effort from Patrick Ganks doesn't actually amount to a touchdown but it was still great to see wasn't it yeah it was definitely a highlight play and it could have been a game changer but it was just a testament to this um, academy defense that they bend not break and they showed that there and were able to stop them at the uh, goal line academy take over at the three yard line looking for a hole picks up a couple some big hits still going in at that offensive line uh, one of the unicorn players a little bit slow getting up there 
telling you about those additional games coming up. We talked about you know traveling and going abroad and you know getting that uh, played at played in Dusseldorf and then on Sunday March 24th the NFL Academy is actually hosting a futures camp and workout in Dusseldorf and you can apply for that so if you want to apply for that um, for that workout at the futures camp you can find details on the NFL Academy website there'll be several NFL Academy squad members that tried out in the event back in 2023 in fact Brian Winter and Jason Stontgarath who we just saw take in a touchdown today he was one of the players that tried out at that event back in 2023 is obviously now on the team along with Dominic Tietz and Yaya Atier and Justice Seelig and Max Bartholomew and Jules Baron you know those Germans that got exposed to the NFL team NFL Academy team in Dusseldorf and then uh, coming over and, and getting and winning a place that could be you as well check details on the website if you're out there watching second and eight for the NFL Academy in command with the ball Q4 as a Canadi goes in motion and I'll hand this one off up the middle gain of a couple you've been to a couple of those uh, futures camps um, Sam what, what are they like as an experience for a player you know what's it like to try out for the NFL Academy I know you sent video footage in way way back didn't you when you were like 16 years old or 15 yeah. years old and what's it like to actually try out what's that experience feel like oh, it's definitely a surreal feeling like knowing like you, you have a chance to compete at the NFL Academy is like a crazy fe feeling you just got to know you just got to perform Form your best because it, it doesn't matter if you play football or not it's just it's more the fact of if you're an athlete and if you can ball out third down going up top and that's good coverage that time incomplete they're looking for a flag as they will but there isn't one thrown and uh, Steve Hagen's going to send on the punting unit what sort of things do they ask you to do, you know, at these uh, at these camps when you do try out? Is it the 40-yard dash and the combine stuff, or are they just looking at you more as a sort of general athlete? Um, it's different for different positions, because I know for quarterbacks and stuff like that, it's more about throwing and stuff. Because you can't just be an athlete, you've got to be able to, be able to throw, um, be able to, like, know a bit of um, about football and stuff like that. But I feel like for, like, uh, people in, like, receivers and stuff like that, it's all about running. Running, see how fast you are, see how good you are breaks and like athleticism is because at the end of the day you, you can't teach you can't teach stuff like that because and that's what separates you time out called by the defense their second at four minutes nine seconds on friday the april the fifth the nfl academy were playing a second game against an opponent that they've not played before the Rams coming to Loughborough. It'll be the first meeting between those two sides, so that'll be an exciting one. We'll try and bring you that action on April the 5th, but do try and get down to Loughborough and watch the guys live. Punt from the back of the end zone. Quinn does a nice job to get that one away. Flags down where the punt was thrown as there is two players mixing it up in at the point at which the punt was thrown and they're still going at it which is why you can see players coming onto the field Steve Hagen runs on and just uh, tells his players to go back to the sideline emotions growing a little bit high here Sam yeah it's just it's getting a bit hot-headed but I feel like everyone's everyone's mature enough to make sure it's a sensible safe game but I feel like it should be all ironed out so flag down after the Quinn punt ball got to the 50 yard line before that all kicked off we'll leave the referees to work this one out does happen in these games you know proud organizations right coming together yeah and you just get get into it and uh that's what can happen coaching staff did a great job running out there and just uh separating their players before it could spill over into anything else yeah because that could have ended a disastrous but uh, gladly it didn't 
So those games coming up, and then I guess you know the, we have that first part of the NFL Academy season where you're playing those European teams, and then later on in the season you get the you know the people like Erasmus Hall came over last year, and then IMG coming over. Are you expecting this season? Do you think IMG will be coming back for a, another game? It's one and one in that series, and that's a really exciting one to watch. For sure, yeah, definitely because it's it's one all right now, so it can't end in a draw. So I I hope they come over, and I hope hope it's another great game. So I want to see some great matchups here. Check out, if you've enjoyed the game, the NFL Academy social media as well. They do all sorts of stuff on social media from, I don't know, I've seen you guys do like Super Bowl predictions to playing Madden. To, you know, you really get a sense of how the, how the organization operates and what fun it is, as well as hard work and effort that these kids put in, uh, in trying to win those scholarships. Uh, it's worth, uh, worth following the guys on social media to keep in touch with what's happening as the referees now trying to work out exactly where to uh, get this penalty sorted out and I think on the Shravish Hall sidelines the coaching staff just getting their After team the together After the play was over unsportsmanlike conduct kicking team number 97 as the unsportsmanlike conduct was flagrant number 97 is disqualified the 15 yard penalty will be enforced at the end of the kick Well that's a really unfortunate turn of events for the NFL Academy on the kicking teams is number 97 who has been disqualified from the game so that's disappointing for him uh, Thompson Umakuru is the player that was disqualified for the NFL Academy and uh, the Unicorns will get a 15 yard penalty as well on top So the ball will come to the 50-yard line and then they will tag on 50 yards, uh, 15 yards onto that to give the Unicorns the field position, good field position towards the end of this Q4. No chance for them really to get back into this game, Sam, but what will they be playing for now with a score 74 to 21? Yeah, definitely just playing for pride, like knowing, knowing you just want to execute one more time to put up one more score. So less than the blow. Uh, we we did get, we called out a number ninety seven, but we're not going to give you the name. I think I think it may have been against the uh, against the unicorns rather than the NFL Academy. So uh, apologies to uh, Thompson for calling him on that one. We can see one of the unicorn players going off the field. So we think that was called against the unicorn player that arm sportsman like, and it was the receiving team rather than the kicking team. Nevertheless, we are back on with uh, the Unicorns. Yeah, it was against the Unicorns because they've marched them 15 yards back. So that unsportsmanlike was against the German side, which is why the coaching staff were bringing them together. But they will retain the ball and come back onto the field, Sam. Yeah. What are, you, what are you expecting to see here from the Unicorns? Well, we've yeah. seen it. I mean, that last drive, we saw a great play from Gantz. Literally, if they can keep on putting great plays together, great things go, come to great uh, results. So I feel like they could could be a chance for one more score here. And they've got some great athletes on their on their side. Do these unicorn players? It's great to play them every year. The rivalry's been growing and growing over a number of years, and they always come out here and they always show us great skill, great determination to play, great fire in their bellies to come on and take to, uh, take on the NFL Academy year on year. And uh, we hope to welcome them back next year as well. Handoff up the middle. Three-yard gain. Yeah, great tackle there. Great way to just... He, the guy was trying to separate him, separate the... I think it was 92 to get to the next level, but he was able to shed the block and get to the running back easy.
Benson Jerry, defensive lineman for the NFL Academy, on the tackle. That's a really nice throw and catch from Fulinger to Patrick Ganks again, who's been coming on to in, in this game in Q4, is making some really nice plays, isn't he? Yeah, that's a great play. Great. That's just, it's going back to basics for them, I feel like. Because they're, they're just running basic little, basic little um, route patterns now, running slants, hitches, and just building and progressing down the field. And I feel like it's working, so they should stick with it. Nathan Owasu Ansa and the coverage. One on one against Ganks. This time QB will keep it falling out up the middle and he'll be met at the line of scrimmage and driven back by a bunch of white jerseys. So, first down. And it looks like a player from the Unicorns is down and that's one of their offensive linemen so we'll be checking on him as the NFL Academy medics rush out just to make sure he's okay looks like it might be Oscar Kirchhofer who's down medics will want to check him out great facilities here at the University of Loughborough Sam and, and you you've decided to stay here to do your degree I mean what is it that's uh, such a great attraction about coming to a university like Loughborough the facilities facilities here are second to none like they are amazing like to have the have world class facilities at the uh, at your fingertips is crazy. Like to be able to just use these fields, use the weight rooms and stuff here is just phenomenal. Because you're training in the same place that like uh, Olympic athletes and everyone and all elite athletes are training in. And it's just to be able to further yourself as a athlete here is a great thing. And I guess that that college at campus, that, all of that uh, that energy around sports and energy around you know being the best you can very be, be in terms of being at the pinnacle of your physical fitness, just rubs off on everyone else. Just being around those athletes, for sure, yeah, definitely. It's definitely great to see, like, because if you're working hard, you know your teammates are going to work hard as well, and it's just it rubs off on everyone else, and everyone else just becomes so much better. So taking a knee here at the NFL Academy, lads, just as they uh, respectfully wait for this this uh, Swabish Hall player to be OK. I think he took a bit of a bang, so they're going to check him for concussion and uh, the medics are going to come out on the field and make sure he's OK. There was some movement down there, so we hope he'll be absolutely fine. But we do need to take a precaution. So, you know, since its inception near the NFL Academy, Sam, there's more than 40 students now secured college football scholarships. And, um, you know, when you come into the NFL Academy, I know you as a quarterback, talk about the different positions that you have and where the best opportunity is for, for players to win those scholarships. Because your sorts of positions at quarterback, at running back, it's a real challenge, isn't it? And you did so well to, to get to, you know, to, to go out there for a little time yourself. But talk a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. I definitely feel like, I mean, no matter if you're an athlete, you're an athlete, you can play but like I feel like definitely for coming over, if you've got the size and the athleticism and stuff, it definitely helps in all positions. So, um, like especially for like O line, D line. If you're if like we've got guys here who are monsters, as as they've seen today, they protect Jack very 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 well, and they you know, continue to produce a great O line over in the states with um, a load of people going over there now, and I feel like that that's shown really well. It is. Some other big games coming up as well. There's um, big games on Tuesday in British American football with the Bucks. Big Wednesday games coming up. Uh, university programs. Some university programs obviously producing some athletes that are coming through into the NFL Academy. Uh, so that's going to be a big event. Join us and uh, Bucks for the Bucks finals, the, the Div One final, and the Premier final on Tuesday. If you're loving your British American football. And, of course, those other NFL Academy games coming up as well. So that uh, unicorn player made his way to the sideline under his own steam, which is fantastic to see. So we can get play underway again here at the University of Loughborough. As we get to the last few minutes of this Q4. Not had the two-minute warning yet, but I'm sure it's coming. As the whistle goes in, back comes falling at and this unicorn outfit see whether they can put some more highlights on the tape low snap ball goes up and a 
again it's the Gangson what a crunch that was no flags it's a big hit going in there from Max Bartholomew the German defensive back coming over and laying the boom yeah that was a great great hit there he that was that was something timed it really well but obviously when you take a hit like that and then they're checking Patrick Ganks on the sideline and Patrick was the receiver that made that great play and then spun out of the tackle last time and drove down close to the NFL Academy end zone Steve Hagen is right there with Patrick Ganks they just are going to check him out because he did take a blow that's uh, back to back now uh, checks on these uh, unicorn players because um physical game and uh, you need to make sure that they're okay before they get up yeah definitely definitely I feel like yeah it worked once but I don't think if you try the same play twice against the academy defense they'll know what they're doing and yeah it, it was definitely showed there what's next for you Sam how many years have you got left uh, in your um, uh, Loughborough career here <laughs> you got um, a way to go uh, yeah I've got a bit to go I've just started here so I've got a couple, couple more years here and then see what happens after that fantastic will you remain involved with the NFL Academy do they treat you well the alumni uh, yeah as alumni we get treated pretty well we do but um, yeah it's definitely great like, I can come down and watch practice or anything and see how the boys are doing so I've still got some mates on the team right now and it's just great to see how they're evolving as players absolutely it really is a professional outfit this NFL Academy team and so many great coaches and it's a mix of coaching staff isn't it from the different places around this a mi mix of american coaching staff and uh, you know british coaching staff as well and others from europe that have played all over the world and how does it feel to have all those coaches in your back corner yeah i feel like it's a wealth of knowledge which you can uh, only get only get here really and it's great to see great to see like um just so many so many players here and coaches and steve hagan obviously leading the uh, the coaching staff here he's with that great heritage from the Cleveland Browns and New York Jets with that NFL experience and also that Div 1 NCAA experience and what's it like to work under his tenure uh, I never actually worked under co uh, got coached under him but I, I've heard from players he's a, he's a great coach he is he knows what he's doing and he's been there before so he, he knows how to get players there he is Other coaches, you've got Clayton Turner, who's the offensive coordinator, as well as it was Steve Hagen, who we mentioned, who's the head coach. Daniel Dakal, who's the defensive coordinator. Gavin Collins, one of the longest-serving coaches here at uh, the NFL Academy. He's been with the NFL Academy um, since the very start. And he's got he's lots of experience, guy. both with the London Warriors in the UK, national champions nine times. And, and uh, yeah, speak to, you said he's a great guy. Yeah, Gav's a great guy. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to get... O lineman out to the states. He's got many, 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 many guys out there now, and I feel like he's he's got a system, and it's been working so far, and it's working working for him a lot. Chase Baker, who's the linebackers coach. Ian Jacque is a wide receivers coach who also played for London Warriors in British American football, and has got all sorts of experience as well as in Europe. George Reynolds, the tight ends coach. Eli Turner, running backs coach, and Cameron Winston, who's uh, heading up the defensive backs at the moment. So really professional and experienced NFL Academy coaching staff. And obviously there's other staff involved in the, pro in the program as well, Sam. For sure, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely having a wealth of coaches is a great thing because these players get to learn from the best who have been there before. And it's, it's shown today. Putting up 74 points is a lot, a lot, a lot of points. And you guess you've got nutritionists and you've got um, you know, strength and fitness professionals working with you on different programs, different aspects. Was there a lot of mechanics? Did you work a lot of mechanics in terms of your throwing motion and those sorts of things with it in terms of quarterbacking? Uh, yes, sir, it always I'm... fascinates me because I've been trying to learn to throw football for about 25 <laughs> years now, so I might pick up some tips. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, like it, it was great here. Like um, I got like specialised. We, uh, me and Jack actually, we got like sat down one day and we were like tailored we, we got pretty much customized for like a tailored program for like our arm strength and stuff like that and it was great to just just to build the strength and to know what's right what's wrong especially in the weight room and stuff for especially for throwing there's a bit of little things can add up to make a big difference and it was definitely shown patrick ganks is on his feet number 17 the player that took a knock and he's taking a slow walk back to the unicorn sideline 
and they do a great job of looking after their players here as well do the unicorn staff as uh, their physio helping him back to his sideline where his teammates are waiting for him he's made some great plays hasn't he Patrick yeah definitely he, he's been one of the stars of the unicorn sideline he has made a lot of plays for them and he's been uh, one of the reasons why they scored like 21 points so we take our hat off to him great job and I uh, hope he's okay he certainly looks okay from up here Unicorn still got the ball after that hit that went in from Bartholomew to knock the ball loose. But they still retain the ball and they'll come on for a third down. Just getting themselves ready to go on the sideline. Sun's fully out now at the NFL Academy. You getting a bit of sun there, Sam? Yeah. It's, you're it's six nice foot six, so you're nice, nice and close to the sun there, aren't you? <laughs> yes. I can't believe how tall you were when you joined me in the booth. <laughs> It's great to see. All right, the Unicorns are back out. Third and nine now. Len Juan Fullinger, still the quarterback. Looks over the middle. He's going to throw that one to the waiting arms of Bitanga Kaliata. We mentioned his name before. He's been one of those uh, athletes who came over from Africa and he makes an interception here. Great interception from him. And another pick for this defence, Sam. Yeah, it's great to see. Great to see his defence still, still keeping him strong and uh, putting the offence on, um, on the field to make him show what they've got. First and ten then, the NFL Academy get a chance to show us another quarterback. Jules Baron comes on just to take a knee and run this clock out. But gets a touch of the ball, does Jules? As we come to the end of this one. The NFL Academy, you've got to run out winners. Might have to take one more snap just to make sure that clock runs out. Right, it's a two-minute warning. NFL, you have three timeouts. Unicorns, you have one timeout. So two minutes to go then. Two minutes to go. And the NFL Academy are going to take knees just to run out this clock. Buron on just to usher us to the end of the game and that is the game so those two minutes got off the clock quickly clearly had a agreement to finish the game at that point and uh, what a great game it's been the final score here at the NFL Academy 74 and Schwabish Hall 21 Sam your reflections and we'll bring you some highlights in a sec yeah, I felt like it was a great game from the NFL Academy. The way uh, Jack was able to command that offense and every, every quarterback was able to come in and command that offense very well and efficiently. And it's a testament to what the scoreline is today. And I feel like they've done a good job and also the Unicorns have done a great job. Like, they have put up, they've made the pass game very strong, strong for them. They've put up some points and was able to pick apart that defense a bit. And that, it was great to see. It shows how the rivalry is growing and... It's just a testament to how well they're doing as well. Yeah, Schwabish Hall managed to put up a lot more points than they did last time they were out here, so they've, they've their offense playing well. But it's so difficult to contain that NFL Academy defense. They're just uh, so, uh, NFL Academy offense, rather. There's just so many weapons on there. We'll bring you some highlights in a moment, as you can see the two teams just shaking hands. And here we go back to that. Q1. This was Matthew Akanadi back at the first score at the NFL Academy, which was uh, good to see him on the board. And he got another one later on, didn't he, Sam? Yeah, he he, he did well today. He, he put up some points and showed why he's a good receiver. And this was the punt return from Arthur Debochi. He lets it bounce and then off to the races. Did that a couple of times today. Really showed his talent and skills. And then we had uh, some back-to-back -back interceptions from the two teams 
And it wasn't just the offensive that were putting on a show, it was the defences as well. You'll watch uh, the tip from defensive back and then a great interception. Yeah, I feel like it was a game where all three levels of the game had great players in them. There's the tip, there's the pick. Debochi again with the athletic skill to tip that one off. And then uh, the Unicorns said, well, we, we can do that as well. And they yeah. came back more or less the very next series and got a pick of their own. Troni just throwing it behind. Yeah, and it was uh, Jan Marton that picked that one off for the Unicorns. It was unlucky with Jack, but he, he was able to bounce back and he did a good job. He did. Stricker took it in for the three-yard touchdown catch for the Unicorns. And then it was Selig busting one up the middle. 15-yard touchdown run. He had a great day, didn't he, Selig? He definitely did. He was, he was all over the place, like on pump return and on offense. He was doing a very, very good job. The NFL Academy defense, you saw it towards the end of Q4, putting in some big hits and uh, causing some fumbles. That was one of the forced fumbles that was recovered. And then a beautiful touch pass from Troni textbook to Ben Lax. Left-hand side of the end zone, touchdown. Yeah, that's, that play was schemed up very well. And uh, the defense had a busting coverage there, and it was just unfortunate. Schmidt with a great play for the Unicorns as he took it in. He was one to watch today as well. He had a great game. But the NFL Academy weren't done, and Sebastian Harris, who's been sterling receiver for them for a couple of seasons now, goes in. Just twinged his uh, calf on that one, but he got the touchdown and got on the board. And then it was the turn of Adrian Malaka. Very similar play to the one that went to Ben Lax. Just crossing receivers, back of the end zone. Did nice footwork there from Malaka as well. Yeah, it was a nice little toe tap. Make sure to use in. Akinardi with a great catch. Great ball as well from Warren there. Turn it up there, great. The only place, um, the only uh, person that could get it was Moose there. That brought the first half to an end. There were some other scores and we had some technical difficulties that we couldn't bring you, but wanted to show you the Arthur Debochi touchdown on the reception, so playing offense. And that was Arthur Debochi's first touchdown of the second half. And then we had this highlight from Arthur. Ball goes up. Arthur takes it on the run, right-hand side. Pretty much a mirror of what he did in the first half. Drives through the hit right there into the end zone. Debochi with back-to-back -back touchdowns. He loves that right sideline, running down there and scoring. Ben Lax with that beautiful play that you described so brilliantly, Sam. With that uh, tight end just coming underneath and into the flat. And this was the last touchdown of the day, which went to Stontgarath. And uh, if you're interested in the NFL Academy, we're going to show you exactly how you can get involved. With that, the NFL Academy, uh, from the NFL Academy, from me, Carl Walkinshaw, and from Sam Fenton, thank you ever so much for being here. We'll see you on the next one. Here's thank how you, you can much. get involved in the NFL Academy. Well, that's it. Announcing that I officially commit to officially commit to officially commit. I would like to say that I'm committing. Can't wait to announce to the world where I'll be going to. Temple University. Temple University. Northwestern University. Northwestern University. University of Tennessee. Arizona. You come to the NFL Academy for a reason. This is the UK-based player development program for student athletes. It's like football Hogwarts. It's incredible. You want to be here to play the best, become the best, and realize your future. There's only one NFL Academy in the world, and you want to be in the best position to go play college ball in the U.S. This is the place. Students have been here and done it, and are living that dream. Our academy is built on the strength of the NFL shield. Every star on that shield represents excellence, integrity, preparation, and yes, performance at the highest level. When you wear the shield, you're standing on the shoulders of the men and women who have made this game great. Coach Hagan, he represents that. 
He's been at the best. Cleveland Brown, the New York Jets, Notre Dame, and the University of North Carolina. He is here to win. We need to see who's smart, who's fast, who can do this fundamentally well, who will do whatever it takes to win and leave no doubt. And when we find those players, we'll have success. This is the place where you can represent your family, your town, your country at the highest level. It ain't easy, and it's not for everyone. But if you're willing to commit, we will turn you into a winner. Who's got it better than us? Nobody. We Ain't nobody got it better than us. We hunt. We hunt. We hunt. Touchdown!